Hi everybody and welcome to this very special Hobby Titan stream. I'm joined as always by my colleague, Miss Kat. Kat, how's it going? Great. Today, Kat, we are all Alpharius and other Alpha Legion catchphrases to ensue because we're painting Alpha Legion today. Um, Kat, we actually know that you don't know super deep <laughs> 40k lore yeah, anything, and yeah. we are gonna fix that today we have a, a fun quiz for cat that she doesn't really have much prior knowledge about no i saw i saw one thing yeah um and then i took my glasses off so i couldn't read the yeah <laughs> so we do have a fun quiz today that we're gonna make cat uh take to see how much she knows about 40k we're gonna jump into that pretty early but in the meantime we're excited to paint alpha legion because look this is an army that titan studio members over at Tabletop Titans voted on uh, last year during Titanathon that they wanted the studio to have. So this is the army that most fans want to see. Yep. And here they are, we're starting them. Uh, I cranked out a test model yesterday. We actually, I see uh, in chat, Xenodrake sent us a ton of chaos stuff. Awesome, thank you, Xenodrake. Uh, I took one of his Venom Crawlers, turned it Alpha Legion. Cat's gonna turn another one Alpha Legion today. Yes. I'm gonna work on some scary obliterators. That's what's going on. Are you ready for this? Yeah, I'm going to pretend like I know what's going on uh, yeah. and what Alpha Legion is. You almost have no idea what's going on right yeah. now. You've never done this. You have no idea. Like yeah. It's just... Yeah. It's great. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it kept, kept your week pretty easy for you. Yeah, like, definitely. I'm going to show up and do what Zach says. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. You ready? Let's <laughs> yeah. do this. Let's get creative, folks. Okay, so here he is. This is the Alpha Legion Venom Crawler. I painted up yesterday. It's a good model to try out a new paint scheme on. Now, I'm really excited about the process I did to paint this guy. And you'll see when um, we cut away from he him here in a little bit, there's, well, there are a couple things I want to fix and I'm going to lean on Kat today. She's going to help us with that. I'm very happy with how all of his metal came out. Some of the flesh areas, um, there's a, a little bit of stuff I, I want to work on there, and that's what we're going to see, get yeah. her take on. Um, I'm really excited for how this came out. I, I like the, the, the process. It's actually pretty easy. Yep. I already airbrushed all of the models we're working on today. So you guys won't see that airbrushing process here on stream today, but we have a lot of Alpha Legion to paint. So I can say I will uh, show the airbrushing process later on on a different stream. Let me kind of tell you why I, I didn't. Um, here, we'll do a, a zoom in and I'll show you guys. Actually, let me show you on Kat's uh, Venom Crawler. So I'm gonna grab this yeah. guy. Um, so here's where we got to today. Um, already been airbrushed, as you can see. Oh my God, I like said we need to share the paints, but I really just took all of them. <laughs> um, here's where we're at today, okay. Let me explain to you guys why I didn't uh, do the airbrushing on stream. This process is a really similar process that we learned from our friend Andrew, how we painted the Night Lords that we sent to uh, GK, along with our uh, Titans, Adrian and Bridger, heading over there as we speak, or well, actually Adrian is in chat. As you, you mean G-Dub? G-Dub, what did I yeah, say? Yeah, GK. GK, yeah. Game Castle, yeah. <laughs> we sent him to Game Castle London. Um, Game Castle Nottingham, one day maybe, right? Yep, maybe. Anyway, um, here is the Alpha Legion. So we used this process that we learned from our friend Andrew. And Andrew um, stressed that the ghost tint, the Minotaur ghost tint needed time to dry. So I was like, look, that's not good stream painting. That's not good TV, right? Yeah. Turns out Andrew, um, I think might have been overthinking it. And Andrew is a friend of mine, so um, making fun of him, he'd be he'd he'd support this if if he was in chat today. He might even <laughs> be, but um, I'm not actually making fun of him. I'm just saying I learned in my conditions here in the studio, it didn't need that much time to dry. I'll show you guys real quick the process. It's, it's pretty cool. So the first thing we did is used a gloss black primer, not flat black, gloss Vallejo gloss black. Then we covered the whole thing in lead belcher. Then selectively covered areas in Rune Fang steel, especially highlight areas, right? Mm -hmm. So up here on the abdomen, um, you, we're going to work on a blitz too. On the oblitz, it was, you know, here, just areas that are prominent. Got the Rune Fang steel. Okay, next was really my favorite part. We used what's called, some people call it a reverse Zenithal, other people call it a Nadir. Yeah. 
And we took Minotaur Ghost Tint Blue and sprayed it up this way underneath the model. So like I was holding it like this and went shh all over like that. To create some shadows. And I wish I had actually gone up a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. um, like even how I was, I was telling Seth this earlier, even like halfway up. Um, I, I didn't go up here as much as I, I maybe wanted to, but for future models, I probably will a little bit more. Then we used uh, Minotaur Plasma Glow, it's called. This color is made for Alpha Legion, and that's the color you see here. All, you know, normal. to come. The to, turquoise. The turquoise, yeah. right. Um, and that's it. So then it dries, and this is what you're left with. And now all we have to do... We have a little bit more airbrushing to do today as we do some of the fleshy areas on him. Uh, but that's pretty much it. And then we just have to do a lot of the trim and some of the details, and that's what we'll be working on today. Well, that's what I'll be working on today. That's what you'll be working on today yeah. on the Venom Crawler. Um, I'll be doing the same thing on the uh, on a Blitz. I have four obliterators here. Um, I think I'm just going to paint three of them. Those of you... Um, this is kind of a funny thing with obliterators. Games Workshop made two sculpts, but they come in units of three. <laughs> and uh -huh. I think they're also sold, correct me if I'm wrong, they, uh, whatever box they originally came in, they came in groups of two as well. So um, they're really, they're always like a unit people love, um, and they always want to take a group of three. Right. But there's only two sculpts. You gotta yeah. so, get creative. You have to get yeah. a little creative. <laughs> Uh, we got sent these by Zeno Drake, and um, which super grateful for. So I'm gonna have to just uh, do three here for now. I'll set this guy off to the side. He might end up in a different Chaos Army down the road at the studio. Who knows? Although I did already, uh, I did already uh, Alpha Legion him up. So yes, that's gonna be. You did all the base colors. And that's stuff. gonna be an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, question. Yeah. What is Alpha Legion. That's a very good question. What is Alpha Legion? You know, look, I was thinking about this, and we said we had a quiz for you. Yeah. I think we should just jump into the quiz right now. Wow, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's do this. I'm going to take the mouse. Okay. You go ahead and... Uh, so let's... A little bit of background here before we jump into the, the, the quiz. Uh, Kat just um, likes models, likes painting. She doesn't play 40K. No. Right. Yeah. Um, so she, you, you, but you do run like a chain of game stores here in the area. Yes. So like you get exposed to this information. So we're gonna see how much you know. Yeah. And we're gonna ho hopefully add a little bit to your 40k knowledge. I hope so. Here on today's quiz. So let's go ahead and take this quiz. So yeah. Kat, hit the hit the quiz button here yeah. today. Really quick before yeah. we do. Yeah. Um, everyone wish Adrian and Bridger a safe trip. Oh yeah, because they're about to leave. They are about to leave pretty soon. Yeah. So yeah, I'm actually surprised Adrian's even in chat. Yeah. And not <laughs> sleeping, maybe. I don't know what else he'd be doing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hope you guys have a safe trip. Yeah. Safe awesome. Trip, Quiz guys. time. Quiz time. Here we go. Okay. Oh wait. You know what? Uh, let's do this. Go away from the quiz. Okay. I need to. I need to get the quiz on its right starting screen. Okay. So you go ahead I'm and get started. I'm just gonna. Yeah. I'm and gonna I'm gonna go over here. Really quick. And get the quiz on its right starting screen. Sweet. So while Zach does that, um, I will be airbrushing in the starting colors for the fleshy bits on this. Um, and one of the things that Zach mentioned earlier as we were going over like what he did with the other um, spider was what he particularly didn't like about it and what he was hoping to kind of fix. Uh, so, hopefully I can fix that up. So I'm going to be putting in a base layer of... Now, you pronounce this very differently than what I would pronounce it earlier. Yeah. Um, I say McCrag blue. Yeah. And you said McCraj? Yeah, I don't... You're probably right. I'm just... Oh, okay. I, I, thought, no I thought I was just pronouncing it wrong the whole entire time. Probably me. Um, no, it's definitely... You're definitely right. I... <laughs> I definitely am. And that's definitely not how it's pronounced. Okay. Uh, well, because I didn't. I don't want to say anything and then it, be completely. If wrong. I'm honest, I was probably thought I was being silly, and then um, it just now that's how I pronounce it. Right. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I think if you hit the quiz button, it'll work now. Okay. Okay. So, so remember, guys, this is a quiz, uh, and you guys play along with us at home. We want to see how well Cat knows Warhammer 40K. Go ahead and hit that button there. Okay. So. 
we know uh, th this is a special edition of the quiz. We're going to do a few quizzes over time here. And what we want to do is we want to see Kat's knowledge on different 40K topics. Today, because we're doing Alpha Legion, but more importantly, because Bridger and Adrian are going to England uh, to represent the Night Lords in the Horus Heresy, the edition today is the Traitor and Demon Primarch edition. But let's start off by saying, asking this question, what is a Primarch? Now, these are multiple choice. So what is a Primarch? Okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I thought I was just going to have to like vamp off the no, top no, no. of my can head. Can you okay. see? Can you see it? Okay. I can. Yes. Okay. Here we go. What's a primark? Is it a an <laughs> extra big man? B an extra big space marine? Or is it C an extra big warhammer? Uh. <laughs> what do you think? Um. Uh, I'm going to go with A. An extra big man? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. That is actually not what we were looking okay. for. We were looking for an extra big space marine. Now, extra big man is not the that worst answer. That was my answer. third choice. Uh, extra big... Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So it is an extra big space marine. That is what a Primarch is. Now that we know what a Primarch is, let's move on to question two. Which Primarch was the War Master of the Traitor Legions during the Horus Heresy? Okay. Was it A, Horus, during the Horus Heresy? <laughs> was it B, Snorlax? <laughs> or was it C, your boy John? Oh, man. This one is... Uh, this is this is a low ball. <laughs> this is a, this is a low ball. What do yeah. you think? Yeah, we're kind of, we're kind of giving this one to you here. Dur during the Horus Heresy. Yeah, um, I'm gonna go with. Um, well, everyone says that John's a fiend, right? John so like, is a fiend. Uh, I don't know what that means, but I'm gonna go with A. A Horus, <laughs> and you know what, Cat? You got this one. Okay, so you're you're, yes. you're you one one right, one wrong. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Next question. Here we go, here we go. Okay. Uh, okay. Which one of these is not a Primark? Okay, we're going to see three things, and one of these is not going to be a Primark. All right. Is it A, Lorgar? Look at him there with some yep. fire and stuff. Is it B, Angron? <laughs> <clears throat> or is it C, Natalie Merchant's 1995 debut solo studio <laughs> album, Tiger Lily. <laughs> oh, man. What do you think? Oh, man. Well, because see, so, okay, so <laughs> if, if Primarchs are supposed to be extra big space marines. Yeah. Um, and or extra big man. Right. Um, or extra big Warhammers. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to see the size comparison in that picture of Angron. <laughs> okay, um, so you think maybe Angron might not be a Primarch, but I, I have to ask, what do you think about the likelihood that Natalie Merchant's 1995 debut solo studio album, Tiger Lily, a really good album by the way, is the is the prime is the Primarch? Is the Primarch or yeah. not the Primarch? You have to find what's not the Primarch right, in this right, quiz. Right, 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 yeah. right, 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 uh, right. Well, because see, the other thing is, is that that album there's someone clearly holding it um they're a much bigger person but it's also a picture yeah, of somebody a, so was, again it was a weird album really it was a weird hard. picture to pick with someone and the person has a white glove too which is really weird yeah which is really weird it was a weird uh, <laughs> choice for me to make this um and not just the album itself but a picture of someone holding the album wearing a white glove i'm gonna go with oh see you see that c's right natalie merchant's 1995 debut solo studio album tiger lily not the Primark. By the way, super great album. Really strong album. Mm -hmm. You guys need to go back and check this album out. I think it gets overlooked. It's a true gem of the mid-90s. Okay, this is, this is a good one. What is the name of the Death Guard Demon Primark? Here we go. There's more than three options on this one, by the way. Just heads up. Oh, man. Okay. All right. Is it Mortarian? Is it Morktarian? Is it Muktarian? Is it Muchtarian? Is it Munchtarian? 
Is it Crunchtarian or is it Crunchberrian? Oh, man. See, the, the one that I thought it was isn't on here. Uh, <laughs> Oh, okay, none of these are what you thought it would be. Um, man. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to go with A, Mortarian. That's right. It is A, Mortarian. Not any of those other ones. I'm ace in this. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. Okay, here we go. Moving on. Last question. This is the last one today. Mm hmm um, the mouse is all like weird. Okay, here we go. Last question of the day. This Primarch famously did nothing wrong. Here we go. Is it Magnus? Is it Snorlax? Or is it Citadel Contrast Medium? Wow. A Magnus. It is A Magnus. Kat, you actually did pretty good. I think you were four for five. Yep. Um, now you know a little bit more about Warhammer, the Thank Warhammer you. universe. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Now, my other question, yeah. right, would be um, what would you consider a really big Warhammer? An extra big Warhammer? Yes. I think we'd have to say playing a game of Apocalypse, I suppose, would be an extra big. Extra big, uh, actual extra big Warhammer. Extra big Warhammer, yeah. How's that guy running today? Uh, fine. Okay. I want to say, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for yeah. the uh, the quiz, yeah. The pop quiz that I was actually um, very ready to fail at because I thought you were going to put in. You some, thought it was going to be a real uh, quiz? Well, I don't know. I, I thought it was going to be something. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, well, look, I would submit that it was something. Yeah, I, I thought it was going to be sort of like a who's that Pokemon uh, quiz or something. Who's one, that? because the one thing I saw was Snorlax. Was Snorlax. Um, so I thought you were going to be like, oh, who, who would be most considered to be like this or something. No, that was actually really, that was really entertaining. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Uh, I, we did learn some, too, as well. Um, now, but to answer your question, because you actually did ask a question, which yes. is... Who, what is Alpha Legion? What is Alpha Legion? Um, that's a really good question. They are, um, and, and maybe Chad has like some better terms for Alpha Legion, how to describe Alpha Legion, what they are. Um, but they are sort of like, you know, every kind of Space Marine faction, uh, good guy Space Marines and bad guy Space Marines. First of all, they're bad guy Space Marines. Okay. Um, and then... Well, isn't everyone a bad guy in pretty? Everyone is really a bad guy, but they're they're the chaosy guys. They're on the chaos side. Okay. Okay, not the the non chaos side. Um, and everyone uh, is is one on the other side. They are on the bad guy side, but they also kind of famously might not be on the bad guy side because their whole shtick is just being like like tricky and. Uh, subversive and like you don't know what they're up to. Mm -hmm. um, I, I kind of would say they're like stealthy guys, but that's not really even quite it. They're more like, um, they're more just like, they like they, they don't even like a lot of their books are kind of interesting because they, they, they focus like even less on them fighting and more on like the weird kind of like political issues they like to cause when they go like on a planet. Um, and during the Horus Heresy, that was like their shtick. They would like, kind of like they, they they even like hide themselves and. So the, they're they're are they're less fighty. They're more like sort of subterfuge. Kind exactly. Of thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's like their their thing. They like to be uh, tricky and I don't know, just kind of yeah. I think that's a good word. Spies. They're like good at spying and stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, they might be. They might be good guys. Like it, that's kind of like a fa famously thing. They're they're not good guys, right? As you said, but they're like maybe they're they're not on chaos's side, and they're playing like a long con of like tricking chaos or. Oh, you know, I see. That's like their thing, but that's also probably maybe not what's happening. Is that some sort of like conspiracy theory exactly, about them or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there a non-alpha legion? Is there a beta legion? <laughs> um, no. 
I mean, every legion, I guess I would say every legion that's not Alpha Legion is a non-Alpha Legion. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, in a way, to answer your question, yes. But is there a Beta Legion? No. They didn't think that sounded cool. <laughs> when they were picking names. <laughs> Can you or imagine? Fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just uh, <laughs> thought maybe there was like a, like a training class or something of like, okay, <laughs> You're not quite yet Alpha Legion, but like, you know, you're Beta Legion for now until yeah. you like get, I don't know. Yeah, 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 exactly. Until you destroy this many worlds. Right. Um, they don't, I don't think they do that. What I will say is I, I, I actually love their, their, the color palette for them. Um, nice and bright, kind of cool. Weirdly, like their other color, all their decals are this mood green. So like their color combo, like we didn't put any on the spider, um, but their their color combo is honestly uh, light, like a, a moot green color and this turquoise. It's almost like a weird space marine sort of thing, right? Because like most chaos stuff, I would I would consider chaos to be like reds and oranges and yellows. Or, yeah, just something that's like not blue. But the fact that this is turquoise, it's like yeah, kind of sort of. Now, where did the theory that these very chaotic looking dudes are actually probably maybe not super chaotic? Are still on the side of the emperor? Yeah. Actually, that's a great question. Um, I, somebody in chat might know that. I, I feel like that theory is, um, my understanding of that, like, that piece of lore is that there is not a single uh, seed to it. But more so, well, okay, so first of all, they're like, their call, they're like, their quote, mm -hmm. you know, their rallying quote is for the emperor, um, which is like, people are like, well, why would they say that if they're on the chaos side, right? Uh, just just for funsies? And that's what some people think. Okay. In fact, I think that's even what it says like on the wiki. Uh, it's like thought to be in jest or something like that. I see. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know if there is an actual true seed um, of where this information came from, mm -hmm. like that they're actually still working for the Emperor. They are the, I guess you could say, youngest legion of the 20 Space Marine legions. They are legion number 20. Okay. Um, I think there's like some, what, thoughts about their idea. It comes from the book Legion, right. I, I, I know that, I know I've read like Legion, but like, in Legion, like everything's so, un I guess I, I guess I need to reread it. It's been forever. Um, I feel like everything's like sort of unclear intentionally, which is like their whole thing. Like, so I, I don't know. Maybe I guess. Well, I guess that's it then. That's what we're I talking about. I mean, it kind of gives yeah. credence to the whole no yeah, one's yeah. a good guy, right? There's no yeah. uh, the universe isn't black and white yeah. kind of thing. Exactly. I, I should probably reread the the Horace Heresy novel, um, which is which is also super weird. Just like. Very, very weird. Is it a single novel or is it like a series? Well, the, you know, there's a bunch of Horace Heresy novels, but this one is... Um, the novel? The Alpha Legion one. Like most legions kind of have like their own book. Oh, okay. And this is, or at least one, or in a woven in a trilogy, and this is, this is theirs, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, for like a little bit... Um, I was getting into 40k lore, but it's just very, like, it's built on top of itself, and so it's hard to, like, pick a starting point. Oh, I see. That's a good way of phrasing it, actually. It's built on top of itself. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, because I was picking a Space Marine chapter to, like, paint um, some, some store Space Marines. Like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. And that, that's how I got into, like, the Black Templar. Um, because I, I wanted to just have the freedom to do whatever colors I wanted to yeah. do. And I, I didn't like that, like, oh, no, you have to pick a thing. You have to pick something. You can make your own up. But yeah. um, that felt like more work than I was willing to put into oh, no. some store models. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> so, yeah, and then and then I started getting into, well, well, why is it considered this and why is it considered that? And that's a, that's a lot of, like, I guess really how I know the little tiny bit of, you know, 
uh, of the space marine lore. Of, well, just like Warhammer lore to begin with, because I know a little bit of uh, Sigmar stuff. Yeah. Um, I know a little bit of 40k stuff. Um, but it's just like it's tiny, it's tiny amounts, and also it's very like much the abridged version of things because. I would just read the Wikipedia page and like click on links and like click on names of like, oh, yeah. this guy seems really cool. Um, I mean, other than a yeah. few novels, that's largely what I've done. Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess really my thing, my question, right? And I think this changes for everybody is like, what would, what would you say your starting point into 40K? Um, <clears throat> like lore would be. Um, oh, that's a really good question. I mean, in some ways, um, I kind of, I kind of famously around the studio, I get made fun of sometimes. Adrian will point out how he, like I don't really care about the narrative. I kind of like to just like think about the how I, I like the the vibe of different factions is what I'm attracted to. Or the visuals of different factions. Oh, okay. Not necessarily like, oh, I need to know the whole narrative of this universe. Um, certainly, when I started playing, I didn't, I didn't think that way. Um, but I will say that you know, over time, I've I've gone into it and read more. I don't think you need to start the horse heresy. I guess I'd be curious if anyone in chat has uh, in thoughts on where is an interesting place to to start. Um, because, yeah, I, I don't really know. I, I think for me it would be like, let's say you were, okay, so you're not necessarily planning on starting an army anytime soon. No. But I would say, like, what faction or whatever is, like, just appeals to you the most, I think is honestly probably where I would start. I think really as far as, like, 40K stuff goes, um, the faction that appeals to me the most would be um, Imperial Knights. Oh, yeah. Mostly just because I really like vehicles, and also that seems like the easiest. If I were to start a 40k uh, army, yeah, it's the least amount of models for me to paint. Yeah, so that sounds well. So fun. what'll happen? I think like what you what you feel like happen. What I feel like happens when you start reading like so you go on the wiki and you read about Imperial Knights, right? Mm -hmm. What's gonna happen is that's gonna like give you a lot of other like rabbit holes to go down. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be like oh. Um, <clears throat> you know, the Imperial Knights, like how they started, and that'll probably talk about the Horus Heresy, and it'll talk about what they did during the Horus Heresy, and then it'll talk about what they did in the years since the Horus Heresy. Um, you know what I mean? Like, it, it kind of provides its own avenue, I would almost say, for, like, um, background? Like, like you, you following, not, in other words, like, since that's what interests you, I would say it's for anybody, right? Like if you have like a friend that's thinking about getting into it um, and they want to like read about the background or whatever, I would say like what interests you and then just read up on their background because it's going to like suck them into the rest of the world. Like just because it has to because that's how the world works, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, because I, I mean I, I've heard that a lot of like, oh, how did you get started in, in Warhammer? How did you get started in like this particular tabletop game? Because like it's a big investment no matter what kind of tabletop gaming you're getting into, it's a big investment. Yeah. Um, what got you started in this? And usually the case is, oh, it's the lore. And for me, it's a little hard with 40K, not growing up with it, not being introduced to it mm -hmm. in a way that's like specific of like, oh, hey, I'm gonna walk you through this journey step by step. Right. Um, to get into it by myself, I guess, would be the thing, right? And I have a lot of, you know, I have a lot of people around me who play. I have you guys. I have, you know, a lot of customers at the various stores and stuff. Right. Uh, but it just seems so overwhelming. And maybe it's just because I'm not aesthetically really into it. That, mm -hmm. like, it's, it's hard that way as well to motivate myself. But there are some really cool models. I really enjoyed painting... You know, all of the 40K vehicles I've painted so far. Um, like, I think this model in particular is super cool. The Venom Crawler? Yeah. Yeah, um, cool. And I've seen people do a lot of really cool stuff with it. Um, 
but yeah, it's just, it, yeah, it's so much, so much is built on top of it and it, and then it just keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and it, and then it's like, well, when I introduced you to this character, well, now I have to introduce you to their whole entire backstory because this is important for, you know, X, Y, and Z reasons. And maybe the faction they're part of. And yeah. Everything. Yeah, no, totally. I get that. Um, you know, I guess that's how you get into any any universe, right? Like something attracts attracts somebody's attention and you're like, oh, this element of this universe is very cool. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm into it. And so let me let me read about this element. But in doing so, of course, you're going to like, you're going to have to interact with the rest of the universe, right? Um, yeah, I, I feel like, uh, th- I mean, certainly that's what happened with me. I was initially very interested in the Tao. But over years, I was like, oh, this some of this other stuff's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but, it, you know, it took a while also, I will say that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I, one thing that, like, really drew me into Conquest was that it felt like I was starting off at the beginning. Well, you were. Yeah. And, and like, it, it's implied that a lot of lore is built off of it, you know, off of other lore. And, like, all of the different factions are very interconnected with each other. And already it's starting to be like, okay, well, if I'm going to tell you about this, i got to tell you about this other faction because they're, a lot of the history of the world is based off of this one particular event of the spire coming to the world and you know right, experimenting right, right. and or creating their own races and everything and right, so right. that's kind of the jumping off point at least with conquest and i like that it there's an easy sort of jumping off point at least yeah yeah um it's had a, it's had less uh like spider webbing less branching off quite Right, as compared to 40K. Yeah. Which is older, been around for a while, and has had multiple iterations of the game and all these different factions. Um, I also think that, you know, this is kind of interesting, too, because even compared to AOS, the, mm-hmm. the 40K one is, is, is sort of crazy. But I I feel like... Um, I, I, I feel like for the 40K lore even has, like, this element built into it of being, like, almost overwhelming... Mm-hmm. Which I, I don't know, I, I sort of feel like, I don't know if it's by design, but um, certainly the universe is overwhelming, right? It's like a big, it's like a big universe. There should be another one, actually, yeah. also. Here, here you go, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it, I think it's almost sort of like an, a design element of it, right? Like, to to be somewhat overwhelming and to have, like, all this crazy stuff happening. Yeah, and I, I guess in a way that sort of gives you a little reassurance of, like, hey, this thing that you're about to invest a lot of your time and money into, like, it's so much bigger than just this one faction, just this one, even, like, you know, if you're going to go with Space Marines, they're just this one chapter, mm-hmm. um, which I think is really cool. But, like, when you're, when you're unsure about where you want to start off with, what faction you want to get started with, I think that's, like, the hard thing, right? Yeah, I think, like... Um you know, it was supposed to make this Eisenhorn TV show at some point. I think, like, that will always help people. Or, like, a lot of people are helped by different video games. Mm-hmm. So they'll play, like, a video game in the 40K lore, and it'll be like, oh, cool, if I play this video game, then I can, like, then go into the rest of the 40K lore with the lens of, like, this video game. Yeah. Um, I, I think people do that. Um, I haven't played any 40K video games, so I wouldn't know which one to recommend, but... Fair. Yeah, if we were just talking earlier, like, you don't play video games and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's not, just, just don't ever have the time, I feel like. How's it going here? Um, well, I got the, I got the, uh, the moot green in. Oh, yeah. I How think... would you like that compared to what you had before? I like it. that was one of the things that I you said like you didn't it. like. I do like it. I, um, when the, the, the thing, the other thing I think might, I might need to do with it, I, so I gloss coated this model at the end. Yeah. Um, including that, because I was like, look, everything's either metallic or maybe it's slimy. Okay. But I think that the gloss coat I used is either not high enough of a gloss to convey sliminess. Mm -hmm. So I think I would either want to use a higher gloss or honestly go back over with a matte varnish. That part. The, um, The green part. Okay. I think that's the other thing I'm not liking about it. What gloss varnish did you use? This Lucky, the MIG Lucky. And you sprayed it on? Yeah. Okay. 
maybe you could try brushing it on. To um, get it like just like a, like it's almost like a thicker coating. Yeah. yeah. I think that might work. Yeah. Um, other ways that I've like tried getting something to be like super high shine mm -hmm. is using the AK Wet Effects, um, which oh, is part true. of their enamel, their enamel line. Yeah, Wet Effects could be actually probably better overall, right? Yeah. Than even just using a gloss. Yeah, I could do that, and I, I haven't really decided yet if I want that matte or. Gloss. I just know I don't want it where it, where it is now, which is right now. It's like the same level of shine as the metal. Everything else, yeah. yeah. Which yeah. was easy, of course, but I'm now seeing maybe not exactly what I want. The best idea. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, I think I think that's a uh, definitely part of the hobbying journey. Yeah. Well. This is. I mean, that was the first model for this army, so it's kind of a new. A new thing. L trying out lots of new techniques on this army as well, which is fun. Um, we have some really crazy ideas for, for the bases that I'm excited about. Um, since I love my nautical-themed armies, it will have a nautical theme to its base. Slightly nautical, we could say. Maybe nautical is not the right word. Aquatic, we'll say. Uh, by the way, thank you. Oh, there was a super chat here yeah. from Zeno Drake. Let me yeah. read that. Uh, thank yeah. you, Zeno Drake. By the way, Zeno Drake, Tried once again, thank you mouse, so really much. Quick. Is a mouse? Yeah, there. It's like a little funky. Um, thank you so much for the uh, these chaos models. Those are very awesome of you. Um, we have been building up a collection, but these coming in was very cool because they're already assembled. Um, so I was like, you know what? Let's just uh, Venom Crawler. That sounds like a awesome model to like do your first. Like, start trying out some colors on. So, perfect. Thank you. Um, also, like you said, they're so cool. Like, I love the Venom Crawler. It might be my favorite uh, demon engine. And out I, there. I have been saying for a while that I wanted to paint up a vehicle. Yeah. So, this is great. I got, I, I also picked up a Forge Fiend for these guys I'm really excited about. Um, again, just because it looks cool. Uh, so, thank you, Zine Drake. The only book you need to listen to. For lore is brutal cunning. This sounds like an orc book. Um, so Xenodrake, is that is that true? I don't know. How do you feel about orcs in 40k? You play an orc army in uh, Conquest. I do play an orc army in Conquest. Uh, the reason why I picked them um, oh, right, right. was because of the dinosaurs. But yeah. they're also not your typical like orc horde. Mm -hmm. um, they would be considered almost like the Alpha Legion. Not... Not like subterfuge or anything like that, but like they would be the like prime elite fighters. You know, it's twice as many points to carry like one of them as it is to carry like a. Um, oh, they're a little like more, a drone. They're kind of like, like elite that. in conquest. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're different than like your typical orc. Army. Interesting. Um, Which is good because, you know, orcs don't always have to be orcs. Yeah, I, I think the reason... Okay, so... I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Okay. Um, because sometimes my commutes can be pretty long. Mm -hmm. um, and I also like listening to them while I'm painting as well, too. So, if any of you guys have a good 40k lore heavy audiobook that you would suggest, let me know. I do have an Audible <coughs> subscription. Oh yeah. So, you know, I'm always looking for things to spend my credits on. I'm gonna finish up the um, Book of the Scour. Uh, What's that? It, it's a current, like, saga or whatever that I'm listening to. Oh, but, okay. uh, yeah, the, um, I have one more book to go, which I'm going to download tonight and probably listen to for the next week. Um, but I'm interested. I'm interested. I'm going to try. I'm going <laughs> to give it give it my best shot, and hopefully I don't disappoint people because there was a point where I was trying to – I was trying to get into it. I thought I was, like, hooked, and I was going to ride that wave for a little bit. And then I lost it. <laughs> yeah, well, so I, um, Shazboth has mentioned a couple times, like, uh, that the, so the Horse Heresy novels are really good. I know um, 
at one point, correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, I know at least a couple were, um, or at least one, I think the opening trilogy was at least nominated for a Hugo Award. Um, maybe not the whole trilogy, maybe just the first book or one or two of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I was talking, Meg and I brought this up the other, the other day. I don't know what it means to be on the New York Times bestseller. If that's a real it's, thing, it's pretty easy to get on there. Okay, honestly, okay. yeah. But I know yeah. that but Hugo Awards are, are big. Hugo Awards like a little bit of a bigger deal, yes. I think, right? Yeah. I think at some point, um, something from there was nominated for part of it, um, some aspect of it. If if I think I have, I have right. There's some connection. Maybe it's just an author won a Hugo Award who wrote a book for it. Um, I can't remember. Um, people in chat yeah. are gonna know more than me. But I would say that I I think that the any like a lot of the horse heresy opening so the ones i've read are the opening trilogy Mm -hmm. i think that's very good um the opening trilogy and then i read the two ones based around thousand suns Mm -hmm. since i like them that's um uh a thousand suns and prospero burns okay and then the other one is um uh legion that i that i had the audio book on um which I thought was also good, and it's super weird. Legion's super weird, and there's another. There's, oh, there's another really weird one. Um, there's one of short stories. What do you mean of like weird? So I feel like um, I feel like one of the things that Legion did pretty well is like do this almost like meta thing in confusing you, you the reader, uh-huh. into like feeling how it was supposed to feel to be like involved in a situation with the Alpha Legion. So like the it was very confusing. Okay. Um and you're kind of like I don't know if I'm following what's going on in this book a lot. Fair. Um and I think that was like a a, a way that they were trying to draw you into this idea of how the Alpha Legion themselves are where you're like I don't know why why is life suddenly very confusing? Like they because the Horse Heresy is like these different factions, the different space marines are going to different planets to conquer them. Right. Right. And most of the planets are, are some version of humanity, and they're trying to bring them back into, like, a universal fold. I see. Right? And different factions, different groups of space marines have different ways of doing it, right? So often you're just often there's a good match, and the emperor says, well, I think this planet over here will do well if we send the ultramarines, and this planet will do well, right? But sometimes the match isn't good, and that's when things get, like, interesting, <laughs> But Alpha Legion, like they, their thing is, they go on a planet and they're just like, we're gonna bring down like the the basic functioning so- concepts of society right. in a way that's like confusing. Like, oh, you know what I bet Alpha Legion does would do on our planet? We were talking about this a lot recently in the studio. Uh, this concept um, of the Mandela effect, people call it, where like everyone thought Nelson Mandela had died, uh, but okay. then he wasn't dead. Uh huh. Um, and um, or there's the other one, like Berenstein, Berenstein Bears yeah. that people bring up. That's probably Alpha Legion doing that. Like, that's something they would do. Oh, okay. That's an example of, 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 of the kind of thing Alpha Legion does. Right, right, right. Because uh, we're all like, wait, 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 wait. No, wait. it was totally like this. Was, and then you look it, it up and you're like, I, my whole entire life is a lie. Yeah, but everybody right. else feels the same way. Right. And you're like, yeah, somebody, something's been at work here, right? Right. Like, this is definitely. I imagine Alpha Legion honestly starts a lot of MLMs. You see, I feel like I feel like that'd be the work of the Beta Legion, and then the Alpha Legion would then come in and be like, you know, a little bit tougher on things. Maybe they would actually be breaking people's minds, right? There's Beta a lot Legion of, uh, would be the pyramid schemes. Uh, wait, wait, who does pyramid schemes? The Beta Legion. Be- well, see, that's also part of the confusing aspect of Alpha Legion. One. They're not the first legion, they're the last legion. Mm-hmm. And then also, yeah, they operate in this this weird kind of backwards way. And you're like, wait, they're called Alpha Legion. Shouldn't they be like in my face, like pounding <laughs> pounding energy drinks? Right, like, and then they, they go for the emperor and you're like, but you look very chaos. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Everything's confusing. I get it. I get it. If you want, like, Maybe. I've, I've, I've definitely I've, read the wiki as I was falling asleep at night on my phone, and it's just like, what are they talking about? Okay. What is happening in this article? And then I'm asleep. This is this is me with the entire 40K lore. Yeah, don't start with Alpha Legion. And also Sigmar lore as well, too. Uh, I feel like it takes a very, 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 very weird turn. Sigmar lore does have some weird, um, weird turns. We were chatting about it a little bit. Yeah. 
and I was giving you my abridged version, and I, I feel like I, it was very accurate, um, and it was great. But maybe we'll talk about that on a. We have to talk about that on another time. I think like you, know, you were really, you were really focusing on the bromance between Sigmar and Nagash, and they they have like a bromance, but they're also like serious frenemies. Right. And it causes a lot of problems. It's a lot of drama. Yeah, it, it was a lot of me not understanding um, why, you know? But I think that's <laughs> I think that's everything. Sigmar is, the whole universe is just full of, everyone is just such a diva. It's, yeah. It's so much drama. Yeah. Fair enough. I, I think that's the entire, the entire thing, right? You got to have some drama. It makes things... It makes things interesting, right? It's why it's why reality TV is as big as it is. I right? think so, but I, I do kind of appreciate that about Sigmar. They're like, how much drama do we want? And they're like, let's take that and then let's just like put even a little bit more. Like, even more drama. Let's amp it up a little let's bit. Let's amp it up. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Well, speaking of drama, um, <laughs> thank you, Broken Chef. Uh, John is an alfarious looking fiend trying to decide on a palette I plan to do bone splitters on bugs in a parched desert with blood red tufts, but very much at a palate loss, thinking very warm. Yeah. What would you think? Well, I really like the parched desert with blood red tufts. Yeah. I almost would do like a really light. Are you like, making your own tufts? Because I, I kind of want some blood red tufts. I think that blood be red cool. tufts are yeah. pretty. Sounds yeah. Pretty where cool, are you getting actually. your tufts from, Broken yeah. Chef? Would be my question. Um, as far as palette goes, it depends. Do you want it to match your base or do you want it to stand out, right? What you can do is, um, think about what would make sense in a desert, right? Uh, a lot of desert wear is like light tans, um, and, you know, loose cloths and stuff to try and like keep the sun off of you. Yeah. Um, but one thing that actually a friend of mine brought up a while ago was when you're doing desert on an alien planet, do the same kind of, I guess, like nature laws apply there, mm -hmm. which really <clears throat> might be what you're uh, <laughs> thinking yeah. of. Yeah. This is a really good conversation, and it's it's easy to overthink this. Yeah. I think ultimately you want to not let hypothetical laws of an alien planet cause you to paint things in a way you don't want, right? Right. That's part of what makes this fun is it's make-believe. And you get to be like, yeah, I'm just, this is what I want it to look like. But I totally agree. Um, but, you know, Brett's in chat, we, him and I talked about this too, like the idea of like thinking about when you design train board, mm -hmm. what the sun is. And, and the sun, like our sun actually puts out... Um, like a spectrum of light and so the neutral like the, the the middle one that doesn't get canceled out is green and that's why our plants are green apparently mm -hmm. but like a different sun would would be in a different spot in the spectrum and plants could look be red whatever or blue. color they want to right be, yeah so or, or or whatever yellow right like so you can really overly really easily overthink this and i'm just sort of like i i would be i wouldn't do that i'd be careful with that um I don't know. It's kind of a way to... <laughs> okay, so my, my thing, if you're going to do bone splitters, um, and I'm trying really hard to remember what they are. Yeah, what? I, um, why don't I like suddenly know what bone splitters are? On bugs. My thing would be, if the bugs come from the desert, then you definitely want to make them blend in with the rest of your base. I think that would make the most amount of sense. But I really like contrasting stuff. And so if you're going to do super warm base, super warm bugs... Um, I would do maybe like cool greens or blues to sort of contrast from that. Um, oh yeah, these are the that orcs be, that like previously were called yeah, yeah like savage orcs. Yeah, that guys. would be that would be my thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, or you can then, if they grew up in that, grew up, if they evolved or whatever, right? Came from that sort of um, area. You can it kind of. The whole deserty thing um, kind of reminds me of where the uh, orcs come from, or the the orc area in World of Warcraft um, from a long time ago. It's a very desert, dry 
like arid place and a lot of those orcs are um greens and browns and stuff like that i they're green because of some lore with uh with world of warcraft i don't want to get into it i read the book it's fine but um <laughs> they originally the world of warcraft book is only fine was in a hugo wasn't a hugo winner i don't know i have no idea i read it a long time ago but um <laughs> okay. Yeah, I would say if you want them to be from that area, then browns and reds and, and like tans um, would be awesome, I think, with like some like cool red spots or something like that, um, tie in the plants and everything. If you want them to not be from that area, I think you can really do whatever you want to do. Um, I'm all for like cool looking greens and blues. yeah okay i cat that's cat suggestion yeah i'm gonna toss this out uh oh add the ash waste bugs that come out those are like the like the crickets the, the yep. did you see the guys wearing the giant crickets to yep to totally no, you didn't. You didn't. <laughs> okay that's fine I, i'm surprised you didn't at least see those um yeah okay well i'll show those to you later it's fine um yeah they're just giant crickets just imagine orcs on giant crickets Super okay cool. um yeah, so I'm going to toss out something different. I'm going to say uh, Broken Chaff. I love the, the like, light tan. I, like, so uh, I, I'm doing something sort of similar. I, I am currently not working on these guys, but in my queue, uh, uh, my Bone Reaper army, and I got the AK Cracked Earth, like the, um, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do them, like, a really light, almost like a cool salt flat. I'm thinking salt flat. And the grass tufts I got for them are like very dark brown and black. Yeah. Like scorched. Like well, I want them to look like scorched by the sun. What I think would be really cool is um, that like salt planet from Star Wars um, where like the whole top layer was like white, but then you like churn up the, the salt and it's like this really oh, deep red. Yeah, that's super cool. I think cool. that'd be really cool. That'd, that'd be really cool. Yes. Someone, someone should do those bases. I think that'd be, yeah. <laughs> that'd be sick. Um, so, but on top, so if you did something like that, Broken Chef, um, I think like very bright moot green orcs would look awesome yeah. on that. Like, um, super bright. Just classic moot green. Classic moot green orcs. Yeah. Um, I would probably do their cloths in cream colors. Mm -hmm. um, I'd probably stick to a color palette of moot green, mm -hmm. reds, creams and tans, and yellow. Okay. That would be my color palette for that. Yeah. And color palettes, you know, um, like I always recommend the pocket palette tool. Get get that and and put like the put those colors together. It really helps you kind of look and be like. Oh yeah, that's a cool look. Um, I, I I love the I love like building a a, a palette in in a tool like that. Yeah, I like I like getting inspiration from either video games or movies or something. Um, so I guess my movie suggestion to check out would be either like Aladdin. Or it's a really bad movie, but the Prince of Persia movie, I think, would be really cool. Just something, ooh, you could do like some like, you know, rich gem colors. I think that would be really cool on top of like these beiges. Um, I think that'd be really, like, that'd be pretty. That'd be pretty. I don't yeah. know if you. I don't know if you want to go for pretty, but that'd be pretty. I think I always want to go for pretty, but I'm not broken, chef, and broken chef. Is not me. Right. So Broken Chef, there's there's a bunch of different suggestions for you. Um, you know, hopefully Good luck. that helps. Post picks. Yeah, of course. Definitely I wanna check things out. I wanna yeah. look at things. I wanna see what everyone's doing. I wanna be inspired. Um because I've be a little bit honest. Um I've lost a little bit of inspiration for my squigs. Oh, yeah? Um, and it's not because I don't want to work on them. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm finding it hard to reach for them rather than, <laughs> like, terrain, mm. honestly. Uh, yeah. Which I'm, I'm very much inspired by right now. So That's uh, okay, though, right? I'm leaning into that. Yeah, why yeah. not? Now, is this a thing with 
all chaos models just the endless amounts of like trim um yeah it, it, it's fun it's a great question um uh -huh. i would say i would say yes i would actually tell I, I have some bad news for you i yeah i find that painting these compared to uh thousand suns which are behind and back um you've seen we've talked about those yeah. before they are worse than this. And everyone is like, Zach, when are you going to finish the Thousand Suns for the stream? When are you going to finish the Thousand <laughs> And it's sort of like, um, I was like, guys, it's not an army you just like crank out. Crank out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yes. And I, I don't know. Like, the, the I found the Venom Crawler to be not too bad. I, I thought he was like kind of okay. Um, and this Obliterator is at least like big. It's like just like a normal Space Marine, yeah. but bigger. Uh-huh. Chaos Space Marine, but bigger, so it's, like, a little easier to knock out the trim. Um, but, yeah, I think that's kind of, like, their thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because, I, I, I mean, like, I've I've checked out the uh, Chaos Knights. I think they're really cool. But, yeah, they, they've just got a lot of, like, bits on them, which I think I would enjoy. But I don't know if I would like that in an entire army like all all trim all the time like all yeah. trim all the time I mean, here's look, everything hanging off of everything and you know whatever they kind of remind me of the reavers from uh firefly a little bit mm. just like we're just gonna throw a bunch of stuff all over everything super chaotic which i get it matches with um <laughs> well, well they are, yeah. i think we talked a little bit before about this like they they definitely give from like a, a art kind of history design element i think they give chaos a little bit more of a baroque feel whereas uh -huh. i think with um 40k it, or with imperial it feels a little bit more like it's either leaning well often it is baroque honestly um especially like sisters mm -hmm. um but i i think they tend to do either like a little more like either side of the broke air right so like renaissance or classical right um and uh, the, the 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 baroqueness i think like the Peak brokenness is, is this trim all over everything, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't know. It's 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 cool. It's it's it's. I think it's a really cool way to like get a lot of cool details without having to do a bunch of like freehand stuff, which um, is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, okay. Here's the other thing I would say think to to consider um, if you're like, oh man, uh, Cat brings up a good point. I, I want to paint chaos. That's why I don't paint chaos. It's because of all the that craziness. But like, here is the one thing I will say. Um, I would say it is like a step up in in the uh, amount of love you have to put in it compared to uh, a loyalist space marine chapter. Mm -hmm. But I would say that like, if you're airbrushing, it's nice because you you do your like you know you d we did our airbrush. Mm -hmm. It it finished most of the model for us, and now you get to kind of go in here and like take your time with these details. So in, in this way, I actually love as an airbrusher's army, not like Harlequin, Void, uh, uh, Void Reavers and Star Reavers, and that you can airbrush them and have a whole army of them in one weekend, um, air, kind of an airbrush army. Right. But more so, like, you can airbrush them, and then uh, maybe airbrusher's army isn't the, isn't the point. Maybe it's more like it's a non-airbrusher's army, because you, you do this airbrushing, then you go and you're like, cool, now I can like just crank out brushwork over top of this nice palette that I gave myself. Mm -hmm. And the brushwork is there. The brushwork's not always there on, uh, I've found on Space Marines, Asuriani and, and Tau. Um, like, you can is, make it, I find. Like you can make brushwork on those guys, right? Yeah, like, I, I guess. But Ma maybe Eldar. Um, Tau and Space Marines, I kind of, I, I don't know. I kind of feel like I, I, I airbrush them and I'm like, cool. Yeah, the, the brushwork is the recess washing and panel, and, mm -hmm. and but there's not like often like details you have to go in and like pull right, out. Right, you know? right. Yeah. It, it's just it's just different. Uh, thank you, Liberty Fires. Liberty Fires message one, Cat and Zach. Liberty Fires message two, Brett is in the ch is in the chat. Yes, we saw that. Uh, I actually uh, have lined up a game with Brett, which I haven't gone to to play uh, anyone in a little while off stream anyway. Um, and hopefully I'll have a little bit more time to do that in the near future. So very excited to take some, uh, speaking of Craft World, uh, take some Craft World against his Tau uh, next week. Should be a lot of fun. 
Yeah, it, it, it's cool. As, as we're sort of finishing up some, like, I, I think, like, bigger um, studio projects, yeah. right? We and hope. then, we and hope. then we're going to get <laughs> yeah. more, into more. Uh, more bigger studio projects? You know, yeah. we get to breathe for, like, a second. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Thank you so much, by the way, Liberty Fires, as always. Yeah, I yeah, it's so great. I, I, I like the emphasis on my name in particular. It's, I know. <laughs> it's appreciated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so how's it going over there? Um, I'm painting a lot of silver. I'm trying I'm trying not to mess up too, too much, which maybe is the reason why I'm like, oh, my, there's so much. Mm -hmm. But it's also, I'm, I'm finding I have to like do a couple coats in certain areas. Um, but for the most part, it's not... It's not too complicated. Like I'm not struggling. It's just I'm I'm finding that it's a lot of trim. Yeah. So I think like what you said is is nice, and that's one thing I do like about GW models is like it, it's usually fairly. It, they don't give you that feel of like wait, is this part of the cape or the leg or like what do I paint this? Like yeah, you kind of know what to paint things. But you're right. They they put a lot of it on. They they're not like they're like yeah. The people will be people will be okay painting like two miles of trim right here. Yeah, it's not a problem. <laughs> yeah. Now what I am curious about yes um, is Alpha Legion like a particularly fun army to play. Uh, you know what? I actually don't currently know how they play. Um, GW has teased new chaos st uh, stats a little bit um, to excite fan base at some point, probably in the near future, based on books that have been coming out. We all assume a chaos space marine book is coming out. Um, they're, they're, they tend to be... Uh, so I, I, we've played them. I've, I've played against them. Um, but I, I, I don't, I think, like, yeah, they're kind of tricky and do weird things. I know they have, like, a thing that makes a unit untargetable. Um, like, you can't shoot it. I, I think they're minusing to hit, mm -hmm. if, I, if I remember uh, correctly. You don't kind of see them a lot right now, which is a bummer. Yeah, because I, I was going to say, I don't think I've ever seen at least this particular paint scheme, it's not like I would know, like, oh, that's Alpha Legion. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think I've ever seen this particular paint scheme on anyone's models, really. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so we, we, we do have a friend that plays, um, if, I, I don't know if you've ever met Elias Cat um, from Fault Line, but yeah. uh, he, he has them, and his paint scheme is very, very similar to this in, in that it's, like, true Alpha Legion. Okay. Um, I, I think ours is maybe this, ours is a little slightly, I think it's almost the same, I don't know. Uh, which is, like I said, it's like what Alpha Legion is. Mm -hmm. um, so he, he has them and his look great. Uh, but you're, you're right, it's, it's not that common of an army currently. Um, and who knows, new book coming out might be cool. But people, like I said, weirdly, uh, it, it won the fan uh, vote. Yeah, it's definitely a fan favorite. Yeah. Um, which is cool. I, I think that's really cool. Um, I just don't know a whole lot about it. So, like, it's it's I'm asking a lot of questions about it. No. I, I just want to know, like... Of course, yeah. Uh, is, there, is there any, like, lore over how they pick their colors or is it just kind of assumed of like no that's their colors and then you kind of have to go with it well um okay that's a that's a great question i yeah i don't know that's a question worth chatting about i feel like um i feel like a lot of people are actually drawn to the fact that a lore will the lore gives them something to do Right. And they don't have to be like, oh, what color am I going to do my Space Marines? Like, right? They can be like, I really want yellow Space Marines. I like the lore behind Imperial Fists, and I want to be able to paint yellow, or I, I, I've always wanted yellow Space Marines, so I'm, I'm going to do Imperial Fists, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, but, of course, you know, they have the ability to, to have, like, um, custom chapters of Space Marines and stuff. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you look under a lot of factions, like Thousand Suns I can, I can speak most of, there's like a Thousand Suns chapter. They're normally like that dark blue metallic mm -hmm. in modern 40K. There's like 
Uh, there's like ones that are red. Uh, there's ones that are more turquoise as well. So there are like even sub factions of these chapters of Space Marines. Right. They usually call them successor chapters, right? Um, that have like very variations in their colors and stuff. So I, I guess you uh, you can change and, and pick different colors. And um, originally, one of the some of the test Alpha Legion models I did for the studio were actually quite green. Um, and less turquoise. Yeah, they were like metallic green. Okay. Um, and uh, they were almost more like the Sons of Horus color, uh, which is yeah, like this like kind of metallic green. Yeah. Less blue. Um, yeah, I don't know what what chap. So you know some Space Marines. Yes. What what chapter looks the coolest to you? Black Templars. Black Templars. Yes, but it's it's mainly just because. Um, oh, you like black and red and white. And gold. And gold. Yeah, yeah that's which, okay. yeah, uh, as far as Space Marine chapters, that's the Black Templars. Or you can go into sisters or, you know, whatever. But They also are yeah. kind of like that color scheme, right? Yeah. yeah. So that, yeah, my favorite color is red. Um, and I, I'm really into, like, black and red and white and gold together. So black Templars. I also like their lore as well, too. I just, I it how insanely crazy zealot they are. Um, I, I just, yeah, it's interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're into you're into religious zealotry, little little religious zealotry. I find it interesting, uh, like just people's thought processes behind it. Of like, I believe in this so hard, and I'm gonna like, this is the hill that I'm gonna die on. I, I guess that's yeah. I guess that's why I like MLMs. Right? Yeah. they're like it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I I mean I I think all Space Marine chapters are like that. I just maybe maybe I just like the Black Templars just because I like their colors. Really, maybe it's just that that's the thing. So, some are more than others, though, and, and Black Templars are certainly, like, that's part of their thing. Yeah. I mean, even Sisters as well, right? Sisters are, like, more zealous than Ultramarines. Like, the, yeah. you know, like, that's that's a thing. It's certainly, like, yeah. Um, what about you? What, what's your aesthetically, like, what, what would you find more aesthetically pleasing of all the Space Marine chapters? Well, definitely a Chaos faction. Okay. Over over a loyalist based on the model line and and the the, um. Yeah, I guess um, I do like salamanders. That green is so jarring in a way. Okay. Um, all over the models, all over the army, but like whatever you go in and do next, I think adds so much. Like, um, I don't like usually when people do a lot of red on their salamanders, but I like I like when they do orange. Okay. Like that that almost like Kelly green with orange. Um, if it's done in interesting styles or metallic is cool, um, or purple or bone. But I I think honestly I most mostly I'm. It's weird. I do feel like I I I don't always know what makes me like a like a a chapter or a faction that has a specific color, but I I, I like the look in both 40k and 30k of Thousand Suns. Mm -hmm. And I like their lore, and same with Alpha Legion. Um, I, for whatever reason, I don't. I think one part of my thought process is probably messing with and influencing the other part, right? And making me like the whole package. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I mean, I gotta say, like, I I like the Black Templar models, mm -hmm. but I would almost mix it a little bit with Black Templar with like Blood Angels, um, mm. as far as like color scheme goes i wish black templars were a little bit more red yeah um well you know there are blood angels that are black mostly they're called death company okay and they're the blood angels who have succumbed to uh this like disease that they have in their genes mm -hmm. um that causes them to like pretty much be on their way out and so like in battle you like run them and this is like they're they're dead in like an hour in, in like their time Oh, okay. Um, and so this is like the last thing they're doing with their lives is like going in. So they're like extra crazy and they like run really fast right the enemy. But they have black armor uh, with like red. And so they're like, so almost Blood Angels is is your, well, if you're basing it purely on color. Basing you, it purely on color, I think I like Blood of. Angels a little bit more. Yeah. But basing it off of model range and lore. Mm-hmm. 
I'd lean more towards Black Templars. Yeah. The, what is Blood Angel lore? I have no idea. Like, I, I guess that's my thing. They're, I, they're, I don't know. I guess honestly, they are they are pretty relig they are pretty similar. Yeah. Run, run and smash like we hate everything. That's not us. We're gonna judge you. Yeah. 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 Super we're we're the we're the mean girls. Yeah, they're kind of the mean girls. Okay. Um. On Wednesdays we were red. <laughs> yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I would say that that's them. Well, see, cause, okay, so before you told me that your quiz was um, multiple choice, yeah. I, I think my answer to everything was going to just say the limit does not exist. <laughs> uh, and I was just going <laughs> to say that. Um, but no, I <laughs> oh my God. it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I mean, it, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to make it too hard, you know. We'll 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 do another. Um, we have to do Primark. We have to do Loyalist edition of of Primarks. You just did the 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 bad guy Primarks. Right. And I have to do the so called good guy Primarks. Um, all right, doing a little bit of the flesh here on Obliterators. Actually, have like I want to say like inch for inch, they have almost the same amount of flesh that that Venom Crawler has. Okay. But the model is just a lot smaller. Yeah. Obviously, so it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a thing. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot faster. <laughs> well, it's gonna be it's gonna be like a big part of the model, right? They have like these fleshy tubes coming up their backs. Mm. Here, where else is there fleshy stuff? Let me go into his face here a little bit. All right. Well, while you get into that, thank you again, Liberty Fires. Um, I'm sad to hear that Brett versus Zach isn't happening on stream, sad face. I can't remember if my two favorite table titans have been on stream. How can I confuse Bridger more with my super chats? Is there a question? Uh, Brett and I were on stream together for some Aeronautica, which was back in October. Um, we did, we streamed a little bit of Aeronautica, um, which was fun. Um, I actually, I mean, I, I kind of miss playing Aeronautica, if I'm honest. I was actually talking about this with Megan the other day. I was like, man, I just want to set up Aeronautica in our apartment so, like, <laughs> we can just, like, sit down and play real quick, right? Like, yeah, that's, like, a good way to make sure you're playing a board game is, like, set it up on your table and, like, have it ready to go. Commit, yeah. Yeah, have a night. I plan it out. Uh, yeah, like, for me to play a board game, I have to... Be like, okay, we're going to play board games today and be like, okay, this is it, right? And not sit around and second guess yourself out of it. Right, right. Um, and just have, like, having no, like, up oh, there it is, it's set up, ready to go. Yeah, so anyway, um, I do I do miss Aeronautica. Um, but uh, how to confuse Bridger more with your Super Chats? Yeah, um, Loaded Fires, I think, Super Chatted on Monday during the Sigmar game. Um, in his typical style, and Bridger was, like, just very confused by it. Look, I think uh, to confuse him more... Well, okay, uh, don't say Zach, say Bridger. Call him out. That'll really confuse him, because Bridger is... Uh, Bridger is this, like, very... Uh, like, everybody loves Bridger, but he, he doesn't understand why. He's, like, his own... Bridger's his biggest critic, so, like... If Bridger finds out people think he's nice or enjoy his company, he's like, why would anybody enjoy that? Aww. So, um, I, I don't know. I mean, he's not like that to a worrying degree. I should set everyone's mind at ease. But he is, uh, he would be confused by that, Liberty Fire. So that would be my first advice uh, on how you could confuse Bridger more with your Super Chats is to just make your Super Chats about Bridger. Call him out. Bridger. Yeah, my suggestion would be to just call someone out who wasn't there at all. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. That would really confuse him. Yeah, I think I think he would get more hung up on that aspect than anything else. Yeah, on that like question. like on a super chat. Like if you super chat like on a game, like be like cat and then hobby question. Then <laughs> yeah. like ask a question that's very specific to cat. How are you? Blah blah blah. Your gloom spike gets. Right. How, you know, what, what's a great blah, blah, blah to model to start painting for Conquest if I want to get into 100 Kingdoms? <laughs> like, just like something that, like, nobody in the room can answer. Yeah. And what will happen is if it's like a, if it's like Bridger, John, and Adrian, and Bridger's producing, and that's the question you send, Adrian and John will just not touch it. They'll know not to touch it. So it'll, that 
that super chat will sit there and, and it'll be Bridger's responsibility to handle that. Right. And that'll really confuse them. Yeah. So, <laughs> great. I love it. I love it. You can also just ask a question that has nothing to do with anything. Yeah. Um, I, think I mean, that happens. I, one time I, I think I chatted in and I was like, well, what's, oh, what did I ask? In your opinion, what's your favorite uh, fast food restaurant and why is it Taco Bell? Oh, that was you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't know if he got confused by it, but like it definitely derailed you guys' entire conversation, which I really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. We. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's interesting like when that those happen. If it happens on the good talk, mm -hmm. it's pretty hard to derail anything that we just kind of were like. But um, during a game, um, non forty k questions are extra fun in a way during a game because you the especially the person whose turn it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can really like mess up their thought mess process. Up that person's yeah. head and they're like wait a sec like they're, they're really like not sure what's i gotta going answer on. this question but like i also have to think about where i'm going to move my pieces and right you exactly know, yeah. yeah okay so all we then did for the flesh you said is the uh mccratch blue McCratch, yeah <laughs> McCratch, McCratch, blue McCratch. and then green right on top of that yeah okay yeah because uh what zach did with the uh the oh yeah, painted this is, one. This is good. Was um, he did McCrag blue, um, War Boss green, and then Moot green on top of it. And you were saying that you didn't like, you didn't like it. Um, yeah, I, I I also do honestly like this is this is better. Yeah. But I honestly do think it also has a lot to do with the gloss. Oh, um, okay. The, the, like this, this is better. This is like yes, and it, totally what you're saying, which I, I cut you off. You were describing why to me this this messed up, right? Yeah, I, 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 in my thought process, it was uh, War Boss Green is very. Um, it's like a very desaturated yeah. green. It's it's almost it's almost like an army green in that kind of way. It's it's very. Um, like if you compare even just moot green and war boss green, like you can see how much like more gray war boss green is and yeah. you didn't like that it took away the vibrancy a little bit. Uh, yeah, of I, it. yeah, I literally want um, moot green and uh, like kind of what's going on in the back of the venom crawlers at the top of the obliterators or other demon engines, like the weird fleshy part. Yeah. I, I, I know this is gonna sound a little crazy to people, but I, I literally kind of want like the, like a, like an Ed Hardy or like Rat Fink kind of vibe, which is like that really vibrant, like crazy madness that right. he, that he did. Um, it's it's like it's like I don't know. It's like Boomer Lisa Frank. Like that's like what I'm going for here. <laughs> okay. Um, on on the green fleshy part. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah, the desaturation was the opposite of what I wanted to do. Right. Um, and one and then two, uh, I wanted. The, the gloss, I think, is the other problem. And in fact, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to redo this guy right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to pass it back to you. So then, uh, yeah, I so can you have to fix do more it. Yep. Make you do the brush. That's fair. <laughs> Besides, I think uh, you're, this is, look, hey, you're, if we're racing, you're, you're winning. Wow. So, I yeah. thought I was, like, struggling. I was trying to be a little bit faster. Because I'm also finding that if you thin out, lead belcher too much um it breaks apart if you spread it out like too much mm -hmm. um and then i'm having to go back and like fix holes essentially but yeah it's okay this is immediately better and like i said i think i'm actually not gonna put the gloss the gloss i think i might leave it matte okay um i yeah uh so you think what that means for glossing for I guess I just will mask this off when I when I do the gloss or I'll just go on a, over with a brush with Matt yeah you can do that that is totally doable or I'll just do it with a sotar and aim that's, yeah that sounds like the one I'm gonna do yeah that's right you can try it my only thing with um like if you're trying to do matte on top of gloss or gloss on top of matte mm -hmm. um if you're not careful with like masking and stuff it will get on there especially when you're doing varnishes because it's clear 
You can't see. It's, it's hard to see. You can't where you're, see yeah. your your yeah. Yeah, it's hard to see exactly what you're what you're doing. So even if you're just gonna put down a putty, I think that's fine. And maybe you don't get like crisp edges or something. Um, yeah. I think that's fine, it, especially with like you know arm length rule or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. But. Yeah, uh, for a night that I was trying to paint myself, um, when I first initially started off in the hobby, um, I wanted to do a black and white theme. Mm -hmm. um, well, I guess not black and white, just like completely monochromatic without it looking like I just primed it. Um, Which is with, not, not easy. Yeah, with glosses. Right and mats kind of layered on top of each other. And it, it had a lot to do with masking. I started off hobbying with airbrushing, um, but then when I went to go fix my mistakes, I messed it up completely, so. Oh, I yeah. see. Uh, yeah. I kind of, yeah. I, I, think I, I think I actually sold the rest of that for like someone to just use as like basing bits and stuff. Oh, interesting. Um, but I, I, I just stopped it completely. <laughs> And then I moved on to something else so I could hone my skills. And I might go back to it, honestly, um, now that I have the kind of experience under my belt that yeah. I, I needed at the time. Uh, but that's what I mean. Like, I, I just dive, like, really deep into how, how complicated can I get this? And let me add a couple more layers on top of that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting, which, yeah. Isn't great because then I end up like oh? being kind of disappointed. <laughs> oh, <I laughs> yeah. See. That's interesting. Um, where did, where did? Where, I mean, I don't know why I'm asking you. I used it last. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm gonna fix this venom crawler. It's like, I think it's the gloss, but I'm I'm gonna also redo it. Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna go go for it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully it looks better. Because it's, it's always it's sad to put in a lot of, like, effort and time into a model and then, like, you're done with it, technically. And you're like, well, there's something about it that I don't like, but I'm, I'm having trouble picking that out. Picking yeah, out what yeah, that is. it is, it is. Um, um, so, yeah, I, I hopefully not having the fleshy bits be glossy but i can I, I can tell it's so funny too like what you're talking about the satch with the the green the um, war boss mm -hmm. um it's weird because like you when i was i was just looking at the green with and without mm -hmm. and um it, it's very subtle like but the saturated being present there does it just prevents it from like going that extra step and sticking out from the, the world around it. Yeah. Like, I wanted to. Yeah. Like, but it's so odd because it's not exactly the, I don't know, it's like not totally that it's the color. It's just like something's there and it's like it's not popping <laughs> like I wanted it to. Yeah. Um, and I can kind of, uh, yeah. The gloss, like, like I said, is also going to be a part of it because all the gloss really does, the gloss varnish is like kind of preserve the shininess of the ghost tints, mm -hmm. which is what I want. Um, but I, like, I, I don't know. We were talking about this even, I think, last week after the show. Uh, you mean Seth were talking about this, and he brought up this idea of contrast, not just with color, but with finish, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want on these guys. I want the, I, I actually want the uh, fleshy parts, like I said, to either be insanely high gloss versus the gloss of the kind of mid gloss, which is not, which is a gloss, not a satin, right? Yeah. Of the armor. And I think that's not it. I think to get the contrast, it needs to be matte. Like yeah. the fleshy parts are gonna need to be matte. Yeah, I think but, if you're gonna have gloss on top of gloss and you still want that contrast there, one of them has to be almost like a mirror. That'd be great, right? Yeah, It'd be like, like a, the level of gloss yeah. would be would be up there. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure I want that. But like you said, the wet effects could be interesting. Which, but. in a way, when it comes to painting models and you want it to look super glossy, super shiny, um, you would probably almost have to highlight this turquoise and, and this teal a lot more than you have. Because um, that would lend it to looking almost wet in a way, or oiled. 
right? And yeah. If you're if you're talking about stuff like that, but yeah, um, because the, there's only so shiny that you can get varnishes unless you're talking about like car varnish or uh, two step varnish or something, um, or candying, which you it, it comes into like surface texture as well too. All right, I'm passing this Venom Crawler back. Yeah. Feel free to do whatever you're doing to that one to this one. Okay. Uh, but also, if you feel like you're short on time, don't worry about it. You can just tell me at the stream <laughs> and I can, I can catch it up. Yeah. Well, thank you, Larry. Uh, Durham, I think the Blood Ravens fit in with the Marine Scheme with mainly red with some black. Yeah, so these guys also, Larry's right. Um, and the Blood Ravens are kind of interesting because they are this chapter that was actually from the video game, which okay. was cool. They were made up for, I want to say Dawn of War 1, people in chat can correct me. They were like first made up for a video game, and then later um, they got like their own rules in the, in the real game, in the tabletop game, uh, I think through like a white dwarf or something. That's cool. Um, and people start kind of painting their armies to match them. I don't know if they've, did they ever get decals chat? Do you guys know, are there Blood Raven decals? Let's say Blood Raven decals from GW. I'm sure there's probably third party ones, which is also a thing. Um, but yeah, I uh, they, they yeah they look cool. Um, also, wasn't there like a lot of like weirdness about who their founding chapter was? The Blood Ravens, like I, I can't remember. Like people thought it was it was either Blood Angel. It was either Blood Angels or Raven Guard, I think. Oh, uh, it's like a mix of the two. Yeah, but I forget. Yeah. There's some. Then it ended up being like Ultramarines or something weird. Somebody, yeah. somebody knows in chat. I, I can't remember. I know there's like a funky thing going on with their. Yeah, I also saw a chat saying that essentially Blood Angels are like space vampires. Yeah. Which so, is pretty cool. Uh, okay, well, hold on though. Um, <laughs> they. Well, actually. Yeah, actually. <laughs> and and um, yeah, yes. So. They're, they have like a degree of tie-ins with vampires, but they're not really like, like if you wanted to play a vampire army, like, the, well, I don't, there isn't really one in 40K, but like, um, it wouldn't, you'd, you'd be disappointed in, in how vampire-y they are. Like they have these ties with blood. Right. Um, you know they have they have like a unit called the Sanguinian Guard, and they they have a lot of like cool tie-ins with blood, and they're like very pale and like they look like kind of vampiric, but actually, chat they're they're really not that pale. Oh, Thousand Suns, that's right. It was like super weird. Uh, that's right. I remember it was like it was totally sorry. The the Legion blood doesn't have anything to do with Blood Angels sorry, I'm or just, Raven. I, yeah, guard. I just got sidetracked by yeah. by chat. Thank Fair. you, chat. I remember it was like something that it, it was very yeah far away. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like the, the tie-in with vampires, um, uh, to me, I'll say, it feels like something that maybe 90s GW was, like, prepared to, to like, lean all into. But as time went on, they and they, like, tended to kind of, like, seriously sure up a lot of their lore, they were like, you know what, guys? Let's cool it on how vampiric the Blood Angels really are. And I was about to say that they they almost have like this pale vampiric look, but they really don't. I like whenever I see GW painting um, them, they look like I, I honestly wouldn't even say Scandinavian. They just look like Central European white blonde dudes. Like they don't even <laughs> look like because the the Raven Guard are pale. They're like super pale. Right. And same with the Night Lords. Mm -hmm. Like the Night Lords are the vampire faction, I guess. Um, I don't, I, I know there are like some funky comparisons with blood angels and blood and vampires, but I don't think I've ever, I would never describe so them. So looks wise, you wouldn't do that, but I guess, I guess we also just were getting into like, we don't really know the lore, but I, I don't think there's, I don't think there's a lot. Like, again, the, it's like sacred stuff with blood, but it's not like, they don't, I don't think they like, they're not drink like, blood they don't drink it. Like well, they might, but. I don't know. It, honestly, well, that, that, that would be that would be a vampire. Listen, vampire. I, I <laughs> listen. I, I truly think that kind of what they to me, um, uh, you know, a lot of imperial stuff is centered around um, like Roman stuff, and then the Roman aspects of the Middle Ages, right? And Catholicism. I honestly think they just feel like like a very uh, like 
kind of like maybe along with sisters, like rooted the most in like Catholicism. Okay. Chapter. Um, whereas Black Templars feel more like, like their vibe is a little bit more like Crusaders, mm -hmm. kind of yep. like not like they're religious, but they're religious. Their religion seems more about the about the component of persecution. Um, yes. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, they drink blood, but I'm saying, guys, I, I know that, but I don't think, that, like, do they do that because that's what they need to do to live like a vampire? I think it's, like, ceremonial, and that's what I feel like they're, like, a more ceremonial. They're a ceremonial vampire. They're, like, ceremonially vampires, yeah. I, I, I would not, like... If someone was really into vampires and they were like, what's the most vampire 40k faction? That's the faction I want to play. I would totally tell them Night Lords. I would not tell them Blood, Blood Angels. Angels. Yeah, honestly, I would not. I, I think I think a, va a true vampire fan would be very disappointed in the amount of vampire feel that Blood Angels have. Fair. Maybe, it, maybe this is a big hot take, guys. Maybe my hot takes have become so imbued that I don't even know when I'm making one. But I just don't feel like, to me, they're... I get that vibe? I don't know. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. I will look into it a little bit more. I don't know enough about it to say yes or no. Yes. Um, but getting off of color schemey type stuff, I think the, the faction that has some of the coolest model range mm -hmm. would be um, Space Wolves. Mm. Um, yeah, I like it. I, I think it's it's cool. They come from like a frosty planet, and that everything about them is very frost like. Yeah, um, I find that at least model range wise, that they're the most, I guess, lore heavy, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. lore. So this is sort of what I mean. Like, I feel like they're lore. Um, they're like, yeah, so this is, would be the, the opposite of that. Like, I would be like, if somebody had like, I want Vikings, I'd be like, yes, pick Space Wolves. Like, they, right. they definitively have this lore. Yes. The models, the design. Whereas, I like, I don't, I'm sorry, I just don't feel like Blood Angels. Like, Sanguinary Guard just don't, like, scream vampire to me. Um, whereas, like, the specific Space Wolf models, like, pull in what they are, what they, they make you think of them way yeah. more than the, the Blood Angel line does. Yeah. Now, depends on how you think of vampires. I think vampires can be interpreted in many different ways. I have read some books where the Sanguinary Guard would then be considered very vampire -y, of like almost sort of like it's this like blood night, occult blood night. secret kind of thing. They're trying to be very religious about it, but then actually like, no, they need this to survive. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And they're trying to be like, no, we're doing this for, you know, this reason oh, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Um, but they're very secretive about it, which I feel like makes sense, mm -hmm. at least with, as far as like, uh, lore wise goes because maybe then that would be considered like touching into chaos it, a little you bit. You know what is true, and actually, like to a degree, um, there's I don't know if you saw um, Midnight Mass, the show Midnight Mass. I think it was on Netflix, mm -mm. but it does uh, it does kind of have like this. It, it brings back like the tie, the original tie in of vampires with like religion mm -hmm. um, in, in some interesting ways. But I I guess. Um, I guess I'm thinking more like Anne Rice style vampire, where it's like more like the romanticism kind of style, like Twilight vampire almost. Nah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, not not that any Space Marine faction would like be like, oh, if you're be if you're Edward. into Twilight, yeah. if you're into Twilight, yeah. What te team Ed What is the most Team Edward Space Marine <laughs> chapter? Yeah, fair enough. Or like Vampire Diaries or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm. I, I know chat. Uh, I think that would be interesting. I, chat, let me know which I, which Space Marine chapters would be Team Edward. Also, which one would be Team Jacob? Jacob is the wolf. Yes. Well, also, that would be for sure Space Wolf. Right. right. They would be, also, yeah. which one would be Team Vampire Diaries? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the characters from Vampire. Look, Diaries. I know. I know. I'm getting raked over the coals in chat for this, but I'm actually not backing down. That I, I don't get a, I, I truly do not get a particularly strong vampire vibe from any component of the Blood Angels, um, <laughs> other than the fact that they, they have a thing with blood and it's in their name. Like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not. This one, I'm not backing down from. Like, well, I'll, Megan has thrown an honorary banana at you sure. for chat. Yeah, so. thank you. <laughs> 
Look, I know. Look, I know. It's not a popular opinion. I'm just saying. I I don't I don't get I don't I'm not getting I feel the like, big. I feel like we haven't had a, a Zach hot take in a while, which you know, maybe this is it, right? Yeah, maybe maybe it's true. Um, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, I just don't I don't know. Night lords have bats all over them. I don't know. Yeah, I'm in. I'm into like the secret occult vampire style versus like the romanticized versions of it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Um, it's cool because I I think it ties into the whole like space marines is sort of just like a religion. Yeah. Of them per. Yeah, dude, the dude yeah. in the chair, which someone did ask if I knew who that was, and yes. The dude in the chair. The dude in the chair is the emperor. She gets it. She yeah. knows lore. Yes. That one I didn't even put on the quiz. I, that that I think would be the like a, the lowest ball, right? Of like who is the emperor? I, and I then if I didn't see a chair in any of the pictures, I'd be like none of them. None. N there, there is no limit, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I um. Right, I'm leaning in here. Crazy lean in. Don't switch the overhead. It'll just be my hair. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, I I'm finding that a lot of a lot of what this is is just kind of painting and picking out like little details. Because mm -hmm. like Yeah, we pretty much like when you were like, Oh, we, we didn't need to do some airbrushing, I'm I'm like, Okay, we're gonna do some airbrushing and then I'm like, Oh, that's it. <laughs> Not a lot. And yeah. the other kind of cool thing that I do like about like this, even this oblit uh, ob that I'm painting, uh -huh. is like there's details that you can choose, you can address or you can ignore. Mm -hmm. And and I like that. Like there are like little cables on him. I'm like, you know what? That can, that's tiny. It's kind of off to the side. That can stay the, the teal. Problem. The turquoise. Yeah. yeah, that can stay the turquoise. Like I don't need to address that. Um, and I think it, it it's great. Like I, I actually do think that's something GW does really well, which is when they design models, they give you ways that if you do not want to spend like three months on a single model, that you can ignore something and get away with it mm -hmm. in a way that's not like awful. So it's uh, now, of course, you can also go too far with that. Like if you choose to ignore painting the face at all, or you choose to ignore like you leave the sword like the color of the primer, that's not good, right? But like there are little things that you can kind of choose to go in and be like, oh, I want to make something of this or not. Yeah, I also find that their paint line is very indicative of that as well too. Like, and especially with the contrast paints, right? I think their main thing is they just want to get people playing. And yes, you can spend months and months and months and months and months painting up, you know, the most beautiful army or you can just, you know, quickly slap some paint on, dry brush it, you know, pick out these details and stuff. Yeah. And you're good to go. Uh, will it look as good as someone who spent months and months and months and months and months painting their army? No, but it's not supposed to, right? It, 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 right. it, it rewards you for spending a ton of time on it, um, but it doesn't... Punish. Punish you for not. Exactly. Yeah. Which is, which is nice, right? Uh, thank you, Michael Cody. Have a week so good that your spirits are higher than my blood pressure hearing uh, this god-awful take. They sleep in coffins. <laughs> I'm going to step away. <laughs> Look, hey, guys, I, uh, I'm i going to say it again. I, I don't... All the lore you're telling me is fine. Uh, I'm telling you when, you, when you kind of look at the model line, like, I, there's not a strong... Or, like, even the rules, there's not strong... I actually know very little of the Blood Angels lore. Right. Um, I, I'm saying there's not strong vampire vibes in this way. Right. To me. Which goes back to secret occult. The secret occult so, component of vampires. I like that. I like it. Yeah. Um, I. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 It'd be almost kind of like a thing of like if they got caught, it would be really, really bad. See, I like, and, <laughs> and we were talking earlier today in Sigmar. Now, obviously, everyone knows Soul Blight is the vampire army. But I like like the Blood Knights, right? Like they have that that view. They have that look to me. Um, and I guess I don't. I, I've never really like picked that up on on Blood Angels. Anytime I've ever played against Blood Angels, which is quite a bit actually, I'm just like, these are angry Space Marines that run towards me. Look, I I mean, I know I some Space Marine factions that I feel like their lore does not come out as strongly as others. 
I think it's why I like most of the Chaos factions more. And as you mentioned, Space Wolves. Um, and also Dark Angels. Uh, mm -hmm. Like they're kind of like night, like secretive night order uh, right. uh, thing comes out pretty good. Um, I feel like a lot of them, their their lore, like visually when you see the army, you're just like, okay, red. I'm honestly just like red, red ultramarines, right? Like whenever I see blood angels. Yeah, and I would, um, yes, yes, Meg, we can check. Um, Why are we checking? If Vincent has been blocked. Um, in a second, give us one second. Um, but I, one of the things that I really liked about Conquest mm -hmm. was that when you are playing a particular faction, when you are bringing a particular warlord, it's very lore based, and you get that from playing. Mm -hmm. um, and so, if you're, if Chad is saying that lore wise, Blood Angels are very vampiric, but you're saying play wise, they're not. I don't think so. What makes the yeah, chat? I'd be curious. Yeah. Like, without super chatting it, don't you don't have to do that. I know you're all furious at me right now. <laughs> Just add it. I, I'm very curious. What makes them? What makes Blood Angels play wise feel? Um, I guess what you might think of, and I, to, honestly, to do that, you'd also have to define what makes an army feel vampiric in its play style. So to do that, let's look at the. Play the art, the vampire army that exists in the GW universe, which is Soul Blight. We have a lot of vampires. They tend to be the vampires that they hit well. Blood Angels, I think, hit pretty well. So there's that. They're super old. They're good at magic and they're good at combat. The Soul Blight army is like weirdly, famously, the the least shooty army there is. They're all super into. Um, they're all super into magic and into. Uh, like, not brutal combat, but like, uh, kind of elegant combat. They have a lot of rapiers. They have a lot of like elegant weapons, and then also um, they have these hordes of zombies and vampire uh, zombies. Excuse me, and skeletons that help them. Yeah. So um, let's see. We're checking to see if Vincent has been blocked. Yeah, I actually not sure how to do that. So maybe a mod will have to have to check that for us. I think Meg is a mod, and I think that they can check that. Um, I'm not sure um, if that's something that we can do that a mod can't do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime. Yeah. Um, while that's being checked, maybe we can go into uh, some fan stuff. Oh sure. Yeah. Well, thank you for the reminder, Broken Chef. Um, and also, thank you. Uh, fan stuff, second favorite bit of the stream aside from Titans and chat. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. Actually, um, Kat, you mostly picked out fan stuff. I did, today. and that was really exciting. So yeah. uh, these are these are models that I picked. Um, and that was really cool. I actually got to do most of the setup for your stream. Um, yeah. Oh, this looks great. And you see the little, there it is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was so Scarrard, I was actually yeah. talking to him a little bit the other day on Discord. Didn't realize uh, he is not too far from us. Uh, and his stuff is really looking amazing. This um, this one, I, I think I picked out like a few and then you, you took over. Um, yeah, so, um, okay, uh, we can't, I'm not getting any messages from, from Vincent, so. Um, that that's what I can say. Yeah. Otherwise, I'll have to look in that after stream. But thank you, Meg. Um, so yeah, this model super cool. I think the camo like it's definitely like an imperial. I'm guessing imperial fist, sir, sir Esco. I'm kind of curious what your or um, just like custom faction. But either way, it looks super cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, there was a couple. There was actually a few pictures of this particular model. Um, I like this one the most because uh, just the angle of it, you get to see the um, the cool, like the the more obvious highlights on it. Yeah. Uh, but I like this camo and the the way that it, it was done. It's it's interesting and, and it's something that I don't think I've ever seen before. So that's really awesome. So yeah. Yeah. Nice. Uh, oh, this building's super cool. 
Um, they there are a couple of shots of this building. Mm -hmm. um, one though, this one was better because I, it showed this interior and they did like this lighting on the inside, uh, like uh, like orange is blue up at the top. Really cool. Um, this building is so cool. I'm kind of curious. I didn't actually look and see what kit this is. I'm thinking it looks actually like the latest GW kit. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Like, this is a really cool kit, but I I like it. I like it a lot. I like. I just I don't know. I have a really soft spot for terrain, and also terrain that makes it look like nature's sort of reclaiming mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I like it a lot. Great, great job, great job. Oh, Badab War Era Salamanders. Yeah, I feel like I totally did not remember that there were ever yellow salamanders. Um, and like this is only slightly now ringing a bell to me. I'm not super <laughs> familiar with this, but they it looks really amazing. Um, now this model, um, it's a tech priest. Oh, okay. Did I get that right? I think so. I think I got that right. I'm not sure I know for sure. I think sure, I got that right. Honestly. I'm going to say it's a tech priest. It if it's like wrong, yeah. uh, please don't, please don't come for me. Uh, yeah. but I think it's awesome. I think it's really cool. It's really well done. There's a, there was a couple other pictures of another one, um, that had this like, um, that has the like, I, I, like this like tank almost thing in front of it, or like this almost like metal barrel thing. Um, but I, I like this one because it showed off. It showed off a little bit more of like the rust details and everything, and the cape details especially. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's really cool. Great, great job. Yeah, this looks very really awesome. Um, oh yeah, this is word bearer. Uh, oh, here's a red. Uh, this is the red Chaos Space Marine. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this looks super cool. Uh, I, I actually love... These are probably, like... I, I, so, Word Bearers look super cool. I have to say, I don't, like, love their their background and stuff. But um, they are super cool looking. And they also are crazy religious uh, nut jobs, which is kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this model looks very cool. Loving this. Yeah, I also, I don't know if you can um, really tell on that monitor, but yeah. the green around the eyes and on the, um, I think it's a hammer thing or what, whatever they're holding in their, in their other hand, um, there's like a really cool, like subtle glow effect around it, which is really well done, honestly. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of, there's like crazy fan stuff this week. Yeah, super, super, super well f painted. I had a hard time picking things out. You were like, how many can we do? Um, yeah, that, that was my question the moment you walked back in. I was like, how how many can I do? Um, yeah. Uh, and then this one is a, uh, there was a, a shot of like a whole army of it. Um, but I picked this one in particular because uh, you could see all of the details and everything. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, whenever there's like a, 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 a shot of a whole army, um, those are cool, but they often uh, don't like convey what's happening. Um, so, uh, yeah, the, the, the close ups are, are a, a little bit more compelling often. Yeah, this is super cool. I actually didn't see, I, I think I saw the, the whole army shot and like didn't really see this one yeah they, uh, there was a couple um there was a couple like up close pictures um i like this one a lot because you can see how bright the green highlights were on it uh which was which is really cool uh by the way if it sounds like i'm kind of distracted is because i am trying to see if yeah. vincent's been been, yeah, but of course he hasn't. So we'll have to. This is definitely something uh, we really appreciate it, Meg, and everybody who um, keeps adding us about this thing. But at this point, we definitely will have to check this after stream. And really sorry about that, Vincent. Um, I'll. You can message me on Discord. I think during the stream, it's probably not a time that we can address this issue though, uh, yeah. because the the cat's like deep into our YouTube <laughs> settings over at the desk, uh, which is. You know. Yeah. It, oh, thank you for the uh, the walkthrough, Megan, because I was 
having a hard time finding where that was, but he is not on the hidden users list. Yeah. So um, I don't know exactly what's going on, but yeah. Uh, now this one, I liked a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked a lot. I pointed it out to you and everything before stream. I liked it a lot. Um, and some of you may remember, but I started off, you know, in this whole like tabletop community playing magic. Um, right, so right, right. the fact that they made up some proxied magic cards for either like buffs or command traits or anything like that, um, that was really cool. There's a bunch of shots of, of this, uh, I think it's a, is it a Tyranid army? It looks like it, yes. Sweet. Um, there's a bunch of shots of it, but I, I like this one a lot, mostly just because you, you can see exactly how much goes into it. Um, and for someone like me who doesn't have a full army, it's really impressive. So, yeah, yeah, no, great, great job. Yeah, the magic card thing is super cool. Bridger uses some of these for his fire slayers mm -hmm. in AOS. Mm -hmm. um, I have no idea. Um, somebody in chat probably knows. I, I think there's like how a, to make them. Well, yeah. I think there's like a a site or something that helps you do it. Um, or they're just honestly, there's a site that just lets you make. Fake magic yes, cards, right? Yeah, and I think that's just what, at least Bridger is using anyway. Yeah, there's there's a website where it gives you a whole template. You can choose your set symbol. You can upload a picture. You can you know, do everything, and then you just print it out. Um, what a lot of people do to proxy magic cards to begin with is um, they will then print them out and glue them to tokens. Um, that you get in in booster packs and stuff. If you if you want the magic logo on it, then you'd have to do it to like a land or something. But those are pretty easy to come by. Yeah. But I yeah this this was really cool. I would definitely say check out the rest of their shots and stuff, especially with the the other orc army as well. There's a lot of pictures, um, but I could only choose one, so I chose this one because you can you can see the cards. I wish there was a picture of the cards themselves because I would was trying to read them <laughs> and it wasn't really working out. So yeah, great job. Now this one is super cool too. I don't know what they are, but they're space marines. Oh yeah, these are Ultramans. centurions. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, it looks like the ultramarine symbol there. Yeah, centurions, we've been talking about these recently. Uh, the other day we were talking about these. I actually love these models. Um, these are not primaris, they're like firstborn. But they're some of the last models GW made before they switched to Primaris. Mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of see, I think they like hold up to, to Primaris pretty well. Um, yeah, super into these guys. Uh, we don't see them enough on the tabletop. I love the idea of one Marine of, in his armor inside of another suit of armor. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people are like, wait, this is ridiculous. But I, I don't know. I like, I like it. Yeah. That's pretty funny. Um, it kind of reminds me of, at least model-wise, um, those like walking mech almost things from um, Pandora. What, what was what was that? Avatar. There you Av go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 It kind of reminds me of that, but I, I know it's like a full-on suit. But these are really cool. I thought they were really well done. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Yeah, yeah. The paint job. <laughs> I'm talking about the model and how much <laughs> I love it. Uh, the paint job also quite amazing on these guys. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, I actually don't. I didn't get a good look at these. Um, I'm gonna go over uh, and check them out on the screen <laughs> here in a second. Uh, so. Because I'm curious what they are. Yeah, I guess one downside of me picking fan stuff is that I don't know what the models are. And the reason why <laughs> I pick things is because they're pretty colors. Yeah, yeah. No, um, no, this thing is a pretty color. Yeah, I liked this one. There was also another shot of the back of them as well, too. Um, and the back of them showed a bit more of the purple off. Um, I just thought the purple was really well done. So they're, they're, they're very, very grimdark in style. Um, and then they just have this, like, nice pop of like just royal purple. Yeah, the paint, the picture is dark. I'm gonna check it out on the monitor here real quick. Are right, these, uh, these are, oh, these are Sisters of Silence. Yeah, these are super cool. 
Um, oh, I really like the base on these. This is kind of, this base is sort of what I actually want to do on my Bone Reapers. Oh, okay. Similar. Um, maybe not quite so cool. Maybe like closer to a little bit of a neutral. Uh -huh. But um, yeah, that's, it's, it's a very cool ba uh, base. And, and yeah, the models just look amazing. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of these, the ones that I've picked are like, there's a million pictures of them. There's definitely another picture of these um, if you guys wanted to check them out as well. But I just thought they were really well done. So great job. Sisters of Titans. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Ty. Oh, Riptide. Yeah. This Riptide looks cool. Yeah. It's purple and like a teal color. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how. Yeah. It, it, does, it doesn't stand out as much on this monitor as it did um, on the smaller monitors. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I just. Yeah. It's so, it's so well done. The panel lining is just so crisp and clean. And it just reminded me of a Gundam, and I liked it a lot. I thought the basing was was very well done for how simple it is. I like the like clusters of grass and stuff on it. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. I, great, great job on this one. I just I I enjoyed how clean it was, um, and the white panel lining um, is different. And all, so, yeah. all purple like this is kind of something I feel like you have to put some thought into. Or it can just be like, I don't know, almost gaudish, almost gaudy. Like if you, if it's, I don't know. I, I've, I feel like purple. You have to be careful with it. Um, and this looks, but this this looks amazing. I mean, it turns out if you just are great at painting. Uh, any Your color, stuff looks good. Any color looks good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do think purple can be like a tricky color. Mm -hmm. To uh, that can, it, like overwhelming. Like wow, that's a lot of purple. And you're like, well. It's a lot of any color when you paint a model of color, right? But purple, well, like, especially so, when you paint a model this big, right? Yeah. But but purple is like this, like, hey, look at me, I'm purple, kind of a thing. Yeah, I, uh, I thought this was really well done. Yeah, this is really well done. Yeah, great, great job. Now this one, I think oh, is yeah. I think is one of the few that you picked. Oh um, yeah, it yeah. just it just looks amazing. Uh, it's like well weathered. Yep. It's almost like a little diorama. Yeah. yeah, love this. Yeah, that was one thing that I was going to comment on is the weathering is very, 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 very well done. Great job. Great job. I like it. It's realistic. It's not too much. It's not like overly chipped. It's very dusty. It looks like it's been used. The guy inside of it doesn't look like super clean in comparison, which is always kind of off-putting when you have this like super heavily weathered thing. And then this, like, really, like, I just took a shower and washed all my clothes. Uh, right, guy right, inside right. of it, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, this is really well done. Great job. Yeah. Now this. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Tell me about this. This I got very excited for I the moment I saw it. I forgot what you said this head was from. This is a little Zaku head on top of a crisis suit, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so cute. What it's is, so cute. What is a Zaku head? Uh, Zaku is a uh, uh, from Gundam. Okay. It, it's just a type of model, but it is it is this green color as well too, which is very fitting. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, it's a little tiny Zaku head on 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 a crisis suit, and uh, and it kind of goes back to the uh, what was it? What was a purple model? A Riptide. Riptide. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of goes back to that of like reminding me of uh, of Gundam. Because that's well, that is the, yeah. the that is the Gundam army. I mean, yeah, in, would be Tau. in 40k, yeah. and you know, interestingly, uh, they always do these. Somebody in chat could probably check this and see, like, if there's been re recent research on this. But I feel like even like recently, when you go by like most popular armies, I think like one is Space Marines and two is Tau, and that's actually saying a lot for the Tau, if I have that right, because there's like a million different types of Space Marines. Right. So um, Tower is super popular, and I think a lot of it is just because of the model of, line of the model line in, of of Gundam, and not just Gundam, but any kind of like I know certainly that's big what robot drew Brett into it. Yeah, just like any kind of like, hey, I like giant robots that like run around and fight each other. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's kind of half the reason why I like the Imperial Knight stuff as well, too. I, I would say that the Imperial Knights and the Chaos Knights and stuff are just more complicated Tau models. In a way, more again, like more Baroque is 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 
Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. They're they're more they're more like land units, and I would say that yeah, like tower are space units, and that would be Gundam stuff. But there are land. Yeah, like Gundam. Tau, tau models I, can. They are hard, uh, They are actually all Tau suits can go in outer space. Yeah. I don't know if a uh, chat will know this. I don't know like if an Imperial Knight can like is void sealed or like sealed for outer space. It doesn't look like it. But no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, but neither do a lot of the Reaver ships from uh, Firefly. So that's kind of what they reminded me of. So yeah. yeah. They actually rip so much into the hull that it kind of damages that aspect of it a little bit. So yeah. Oh, this is super cool. Uh, this thing is like, uh, this is a Custodes, but like, for whatever reason, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but this Custodes model just feels like, yes, you could play, of course, play this in 40k Custodes, but it just has like a heresy. There's something that just yells heresy uh, vibe, 30k vibe for, for this guy to me. I don't know what it is. He looks like a Roman legionnaire in a way. Well, yes. Yeah, which uh, yeah. which is yeah, w which is probably what it's designed after. But yeah, yeah I <laughs> I like it. It's really cool. Um, the highlights on everything were really well done. Um, also, fantastic picture. Uh, the base is is I, I don't want to say plain, but it suits it because it, it lets the model shine. I think, but the blending on the cape is done is done really well. The Little bits of weathering at the, you know, at the bottom of it. I just, I yeah. This is this is oh, really just clean. Oh, just Terminator, Adam. Um, yeah, thank you. That's why it screams heresy to me, because a just staring Terminator is a special Terminator for uh, Sons of Horus. So I guess that's why. Oh, a lot of people are saying it's a kit bash for thirty k. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. That's why it screams heresy to me. <laughs> the Sons of Horus. Yeah. 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 I actually. Uh, yeah. We. We. Sorry, guys. We. We can't always see things amazingly. Um, we actually need to. I. I. So I am almost always the one that picks out fan stuff, and now that I am not the one who has done it, I realize the problem is like you don't get to see it on. The yeah, I monitor. have not seen yeah. this previously. That I think that was why I was so excited about being able to pick it. Being the one who gets to see. Things yeah. Better. Most of the time, it's like. Me squinting at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Really cool fan stuff. Um, yeah. I. Uh, I don't know. There's was, was amazing stuff. I kind of started going through some of them, and then, cat uh, took over. Yeah. Uh, great stuff. Can I ask? Mm -hmm. What stage are you on? Um. I think I've gotten most of. The lead belcher on. Oh, oh no! I missed a spot, so I gotta go over the little tubes on top of this little fleshy bit here. Um, but most of the lead belcher is on. Um, but yeah, <laughs> almost, almost there. I want to say. Oh, I see. Um. Well, thank you, damn it! Whenever I play Blood Angels, I bite my opponent in the neck. To assert my vampiric superiority. Also, I'm torn between Imperial Fist and Blood Angels for 30k when that big box comes out. Thoughts? Blood Imp Angels. Yeah, I would say Blood Angels, but look, I, I literally just got uh, finished saying that for whatever reason, these two factions uh, don't scream their, their thing out at me. Um, so I might not be the best person to ask between these two. Um, there are a lot of them where I would be like, oh yeah, definitely do this one. I do think in 30k, Blood Angels are, um, oh, this is a good question. A, a lot of the factions have different, have like a different vibe in, in 30k than they do in, in, um, 40. in 40k. Yeah. But n never like so much that's like a whole different thing. Yeah, and actually I kind of changed my mind. Um, because you already say that you play uh, Blood Angels, Yeah. I'd just go the opposite whatever one you don't already play. And if you play both, then... No, really? I, <laughs> you don't want to tell them to double down? I kind of like doubling down. <laughs> I'm not sure. So th it's a great question. I, well, look, okay. 
damn it, there's so many reasons that you would go one or the other. Um, I think play style is huge, right? So, like, uh, it, this is a really good question. We talk about this all the time. Like, what makes you pick an army? And I, I think there are so many armies out there that I don't know about you guys, but for me, there's always, like, some home runs. Mm -hmm. And a home run means it looks fun to paint, I like the lore, and I like the play style. I don't know that I would ever commit to painting up an army that one of those three things I really was like, uh, I don't really like this. Like, can you imagine, Kat, like painting a whole army and while you're painting it, you're kind of like, oh, I don't like the way that, I don't like this color scheme. I don't like how this army paints up. Or that would be the worst, but can you also just imagine being like either like, man, I'm not, excited about this army's background or I don't think no then cool I don't think all. I would ever I, yeah. I don't think I would finish painting them at all maybe whatsoever. this is damn it's issue damn it you you like both of them too much <laughs> I guess you've narrowed it down to the two that you like the most um oh man you know what damn it I'm just gonna keep making this harder for you buddy because the other thing I'm gonna say is in the heresy novels here here we go again I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get yelled at for this I know <laughs> but in the heresy novels I don't know about you guys but I found that Dorn and Sanguinius were like, oh my gosh, are they talking again? Like anytime these two like chimed in and started doing stuff, I was like, these are definitely two of my least favorite characters in the opening trilogy. Oh no. Um, so I don't like either the Primarchs that much. Sanguinius in the opening trilogy audiobook, uh, you guys, his voice, right? Come on, something. The voice that they do for Sanguinius, not like not what you think Sanguinius is going to sound like. He's he's kind of he's kind of fancy. Um, he sounds like I don't know. Like a character from Bridgerton? Um Maybe. I haven't seen Bridgerton. But but I think yes. From, from but actually assume, I think assume yes. of what you know of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Um uh yeah, uh, well, thank you, Prime Vino, uh, for relaying this message. But um, from Ragnarok, uh, Kat, you should look into word, word bears or world bears? Word bearers. Word bears and their lore. I think that's something you could really like in terms of color. Right. So this is, we saw one of these guys. It was the red, it was the red one. And uh, is, that, is, is that helpful to you, the red one we saw? Um, it was actually right when you went over um, <laughs> to the fan stuff. And yeah, they're red. They're, you know, you've seen Word Bearers red, the paint. It's like almost like that deep maroon, not maroon. Um, it's right back here. Like this line of paint, this is named literally after these, the Legion. Okay. Galvor, Bach, and then Word Bearers. So that's like oh, the color they oh, okay. are. okay. They're that and silver. Okay. And they're bad guys. And they are, uh, they're... Arguably, what would we say, Chad? They're they're the fat they're the legion that started the horse heresy. They're the first ones that fell to chaos. And basically what why that happened is they're I guess they had like in a gene seed kind of concept. Like they liked religion. And they wanted to worship the Emperor as a god, but the Emperor was like, hey guys, I'm not a god, don't worship me. Um, and uh, as a result of that, they like other factions are like, hey guys, uh, you're being crazy. Stop trying to worship the emperor. Um, and they're like, yep, no, we're going to keep worshiping the emperor. And uh -huh. then like, I guess they just needed, they wanted something to follow. Right. So then Chaos was like, hey, I got an idea of who you can worship. Me. Me. Right. <laughs> that's kind of, that's a, 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 a summed up, grossly summed up, I understand. No, I enjoy it. Version of, of yeah. what happened. Um, so they're like super religious zealots. Um, okay. Like to that, like that's their thing. Uh, yeah, word bears are cool. Thank you, um, Ragnarok. Yeah, that's it's it is. I, I was thinking that for that cat would be might find them interesting as well. Um, oh, and then the other cool the thing I do like about word bears again, it's not a unit that I personally would get into, mm -hmm. um, or excuse me, a legion I personally would get into, mm -hmm. but um, they. That pink color, that Galvor Bach, those are like the original Space Marines that got like kind of turned, that like very demony, like the guys we're currently painting. Like, right. They're like the first ones uh, that that had that. And in Heresy, actually, I don't know anyone who played Heresy uh, or plays Heresy, 
I was going to say before the relaunch, but nobody's played it since the relaunch because it hasn't happened quite yet. Um, they had, they were interesting because they had um, uh, demons. They could take demons before anybody else could. Because oh, they like oh, okay. summoned, they, they, they had like fallen, they had basically like fallen to demons like 40, 30 some, someone in chat might know the number. It's like a while, it's like of several decades before anybody else had. Um, so they were like, chaos was like like doing its thing like long before anyone even knew what was going on. Super interesting. How's it going? Uh, I'm getting, I, I am past trim now. Okay. I'm past the trim, which I'm excited about. And you're you're doing um, you're doing more details. What I'm doing while uh, since Kat and I are almost painting kind of the same colors, what I'm doing while she's working on that is I'm going through and kind of starting some, using some washes. On all the trim we just did, there's sort of two ways we're going to wash it. One is on more prominent areas, we're going to wash it strictly with curling green shade, and this is no surprise going to do a little bit of verdigris, which um, like like a light verdigris look, like very like alluded to almost, right. or like tinting. Um, and then also uh, a step up, a little milkier, a little more opaque, the AK turquoise ink. We're gonna mix in with that. Um, other areas that are like maybe not as prominent or if they're more functional, like a piece of machinery, mm -hmm. we're going to do just non oil. And then, you know, I told Kat earlier, I was like, this isn't the best advice, uh, not advice, because I'm not giving advice, I was, frankly, giving instruction, right, mm -hmm. of kind of how we're doing this, I was like, just have fun with it. <laughs> You're like, I don't want to be, like, a hip art teacher, but, you know, just have fun. Here's all these colors. You yeah. know, do what you want. I'm Duh. like... Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your art teacher that you're like, that like when you when like your freshman year, you're like, this is awesome. But then like your your senior year, you're like, you're like dude, no. can we get a can, syllabus? Yeah. <laughs> can we get something? Yeah. Yeah, please. I just have fun with it. I can't. Well, maybe you shouldn't be an artist. You don't know what just have fun with it means. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> so many hot days. Wow, that that artist, that that teacher was not as hip as I thought they were. Wow, well, yeah, very Turns judgmental. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, you know, it's fine. I, I'm trying to match it as best as I can while um, addressing the concerns that you brought to my attention earlier. Concerns? What concerns? Well, just like, I, I don't like this, or, you know, maybe do this way, or, you know, whatever, right? Do it, do whatever you kind of want. Oh, bit. right, yeah. right, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I think there are, uh, like, it, it's going to turn out looking good either way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Rudy Picardo. Uh, I hope my SC posts help you get a, a coupler and cleaning supplies for your airbrushes. I would rather support your channel. Oh, super chat. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I would rather support your channel than get one of my own right now. Your videos have been motivating as I help my own gaming store. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you, Rudy. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder how your terrain's going. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I want to see some pictures. I think that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, like, I, I think anyone who's willing to, like, invest time helping out their community as a whole um it definitely deserves more than just praise so yeah i hope i hope your local gaming store is doing something really nice for you that that's really awesome now kind of weirdly here speaking of weird stuff going on with super chats today uh cat there's in the viewer activity window it looks like uh rudy sent a super chat already oh. that like this super chat weirdly did not show up in normal chat normal chat yeah, something's up. Oh, no, oh there, there it is. is. There uh, is, yeah. there is. Oh. <laughs> uh, other Rudy Picardo. Uh, hi, Same Hobby Rudy Titans. Picardo probably. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> other Rudy Picardo super chat is what I meant. Hi, Hobby Titans. Thank you for your help last week. Just finished set five of six terrain sets for my local store. I want to improve the look in games by using rocks and florals seen on uh, TT Bat Reps. Uh, Typical Titans, right? Bat yeah. reps, but I don't know how to do that. Can you help? Using rocks and floral. Seen on TT. So, oh, battle reports. Ha ha ha. Yeah, so, okay, Rudy, if that is Tabletop Titans, then 
probably it's terrain I made. If it's tabletop tactics, then it's probably not terrain I made. And I don't watch a lot of um, other channels for um, for that. And I, I do, but not enough to maybe know exactly what you're talking about. So if that is tabletop tactics, I wouldn't know how how they're doing that. So if you're still in chat, Rudy, let me know if that's something we have. If you you mean ours, or if you mean tabletop tactics. Um, either way, I, I yeah I tend to not use. I know that like when you go to like a craft store like Michaels or whatever in the U.S., you're sort of like oh floral section. What can I get out of here? I, I have to say moss. I moss. Ha- moss. Yeah, moss. Yeah. Um, also in the floral section, um, they also have, um, and this might be in like the floral arrangement section or like the terrarium arrangement section or whatever. Yeah. Um, at your local, like just generic hobby store. Yeah. Um, they will have oftentimes tubs of gravel or rocks or Mm, something. Yes. Um, Which we use a lot. yeah, Yeah. And you can get like you know, a pretty sizable tub of it, usually for about like $5. Um, and that will last you for a really, really, really long time. Um, and the best part, of, honestly, about yeah. both moss and gravel is the way we use it here at the studio is we typically just buy it and then we have like a shelf in our training room of moss and gravel uh-huh. that matches particular boards. We don't often, I don't often attach moss or gravel to anything. Now, in a game store, you... Wouldn't would. do this, right? Yeah, I no, would not. I would not just set out moss and gravel set for out, people. Right? Here's a tub of moss and gravel. You would want expect it to still be there. <laughs> you'd want it to. You'd want to attach it to things. Yeah. Um, but here we we don't have that issue, so we we can like we literally just sprinkle the moss and the gravel. In fact, it's like the last that we set the whole board up, and then we just add gravel and and reindeer moss is really what it is. The preserved reindeer yep. lichen or whatever it's mm-hmm. called. Um, we, we add that, you know, as bushes and, and rocks. Now, the other thing that you can do with um, some cool, like, just generic hobby stuff is um, sea sponges make really cool, like, alien plants as well, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have that at a couple of our stores, terrains. Um, I think one's that Seth has built. Oh, um, the one that, it's not like it's the... the purple one. Yeah, yes. Yeah. It's not like the, um, we have one over there. It's not like the sponge you, that looks like a artificial sponge. Yeah. It's the one that's like, looks woven and like goes the, in a the cone. The sea sponge, yeah. Well, they both are a type of sea sponge, right? Yes, but, yeah, but, yeah. You can almost peel them sort of like right, bananas. Which is what, which is in, what in he a way. did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then you can airbrush them or... or um, Honestly, just go at them with like a rattle can, different colors. They make some really cool like alien esque um, floral stuff, and then just like pack in moss around it to. You could just uh, hot glue it to whatever like base you're working on. Yeah. Um, other ones, I don't know if I've ever seen them for sale at hobby stores, um, but if you, I wish I remembered what tree they were from. But they're they're little seed pods that sort of have like these spikes on them and they're hollow. Um, oh yeah, I, and those make cool alien bushes in a way. Yeah, yeah, I feel like um, it's a type of chestnut tree. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's something. It's yeah, yeah it's something. Um, those are really cool to use for floral stuff. If you want to make your own tufts, like if you have like a bunch of gamer grass tufts or whatever, and you want to put flowers on them. One thing that I would highly recommend you buy is the pollen from Gamer's Grass. Um, mm, right, right. Which is the really fine foam stuff. And then if you take your, your you know, your Gamer, did I say pollen from Woodland Scenics? I think I said pollen from Gamer's you Grass. You said Gamer's Grass. Yeah, yeah pollen yeah. from Woodland Scenics. Yeah, yeah. Um, but because I, I know that Gamers Grass makes flowery tufts, they just don't make them in all sorts of different colors, and also they all are just like one color. Um, if you wanted to mix your flowers on one tuft, you can just buy the pollen 
powder from um, Woodland Scenics and then go at it that way. You just dip the, the tip of your tuff in some white glue. Um, now, if it comes off like super clumped together, just like dab it a little bit on a paper towel, dip that into whatever powder pollen that you want to dip it into, and then you got a flowery tuft there. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do it. Uh, my thing is kind of centered on some advice that I, I gave a couple weeks ago. Um, is you're trying to break up the shape of something that everyone would recognize as a rose or as you know moss or as something and adding to it and then once you spray that one color mm -hmm. you can paint it up and make it really into whatever you want to make it into so um yeah Rudy Picardo definitely referring to your terrain used in tabletop titans I found your channel thanks to the rattle reports what brand of moss gravel is the best anything well really? yeah. yeah so anything I, that's on sale so um i actually would yeah foogs yeah so i honestly do get my moss from this website called Teresa's plants llc and i think when you go now into a michael's like i i often do see like blue or purple or different colors mm -hmm. but 10 years ago when i was starting to like use all the crazy funky color moss um which is an idea i got from striking scorpion battle reports like forever ago those of you guys who watch battle reports you know he's been at forever um striking scorpion 82 i got like this idea to use the moss and gravel as much of my train boards from him um and and the boards he would set up and when i went to like kind of search for moss i found this person's website Teresa's plants llc it's in like super middle of nowhere arkansas and um she had just like had all these crazy wild colors at the time i didn't see that at other places so I've, I still use her. I, um, I order, I pick out colors. I've ordered almost every color at this point over time. And um, yeah, they're great. She's great. The, the pricing is, is great. Um, what I tend to find I like a little bit better about hers compared to like picking up from Michael's. One is like you can go get the specific color. Mm -hmm. I feel like usually when I go into Michael's, there's like the normal colors, which are useful. Green. Green, and maybe brown. tan. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they might have one or two weird colors. Like I've seen purple and blue there, mm -hmm. but like she, she's like mango. She has one called mango. She's got like lavender. She's got like three or four different purples. And that's actually what I like to do is I like to get like two or three different reds because that makes it look a little more natural in an unnatural world. Right. Where there's like a clump of them and they're just like slightly different shades Yeah, like of red. how I clumping exactly. my tufts together. Yeah, so you can do that um, if you, want to put in the effort of painting them you, you can easily paint any just green moss um, the thing that you want to pay attention to when you're buying moss is you want to make sure that it's already preserved hers, hers is yeah as well um, it'll keep that sort of like spongy texture yeah. to it and it, it takes a while for it to dry out and, and, and crumble and away then you want to keep it in bags yeah also and seal to help it, it not dry or out. you know whatever if you're going to glue it to whatever you're going to glue it to It'll last just fine as well, too. It just, after maybe like a year or two, it will start to crumble away. And then at that point, you can just rip it off and then glue another one on. Yeah. Um, that's totally fine. But yeah, if you want to keep it loose, then definitely keep them in bags. Keep it loose. Keep it in bags. Um, if you can keep it, keep it loose. Yeah. Um, but since you're, since you're doing it for a store. Maybe not. Glue it on. Yeah, maybe um, not, right. Glue it on. <laughs> it would be my advice. Um, yeah, and you can like... Yeah, Rudy, it's interesting. So, like, the, the club I had was uh, uh, the, the started, we um, we would do this, and I would always put bags of moss in the bin mm -hmm. and be like, hey, guys, this moss goes by, like, <laughs> usually a lot of people wouldn't put it on. Right? Yeah, like, I've, I've, they, I think sometimes I would see it on, sometimes yeah, I wouldn't, yeah, yeah. or people um, would just kind of, like, throw it on, like, their little flower yeah. girls at a wedding. Uh, yeah, okay. Zach's going to make, Zach's going to come over and be, hey, guys, where's the moss? <laughs> Uh, let's just shut that down right now. Yeah. So yeah, um, Teresa's Plants LLC for the moss. I, lo I love it. Um, and she's got like different bundles and it, it's great. Um, su super cool. I, I actually emailed her one time 
with a bunch of pictures of our train and moss all over it. Aww. And she was like, what is this? I didn't yeah. even know this existed. She had like no idea people were using her moss for that. It was, it was kind of it was kind of wild. That's and she cute, sent though. me um then I, I had just done an order and she sent me like um I can't remember if they're coupons or cards or something. I think they're coupons. She sent me like a stack of coupons. Oh, um, for you to give to yeah, people to in the give club. To yeah. It was very nice. That's nice. Um, so now for gravel, like yeah, damn it, uh, we're gonna go back to your super chat by the way. But damn it, I saw you were saying like just go find stuff in your yard. That can work if you're on a budget. That's the best. My my thing with that, if you're going to use found found stuff, anything found anything, right? make sure you wash it, um, because like found gravel or found sticks or found whatever, make sure you wash it and then dehydrate it very well afterwards and by i don't mean just dry i mean like fully dehydrated because sometimes what happens when you're working with natural material is um it expands and contracts in ways that can really kind of start messing up your your stuff especially if it's like glued in really tightly um it can start to break your your foam it'll break you know your glue um Oftentimes, also, you're just gluing the outer layer of dirt to things, and then it doesn't yeah. stick very well. So definitely wash it. It's um, kind of surprising how much the stuff that you buy, you're like, why am I buying rocks? But it has been treated. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's been Like, these things have actually been, been treated quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, everything like that. So, yeah, it's made to already kind of accept paint or, you know, it's made to be hobbied with. And that's that's the reason why we're just kind of going like, oh, I'll just buy this. It's, yeah. it's surprisingly a thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, what I would say about gravel, uh, the other thing I would, I would just toss out is that I tend to like, uh, you can also find moss uh, depending on where you live. Actually, you can find it out here in the Santa Cruz Mountains. Mm -hmm. Meg and I did a hike one time and ended up pretty high up in the mountains where it was misty and like foggy all the time. Yep. And it's up there. It's like super bright green. It looks unnatural almost. Yeah. Um, but the problem is it's not treated. Yep. And so like it doesn't last long. You bring it back down and it dries out. Yeah. yeah, so the, the times that I've used natural materials in things, um, there's a whole process to preserve it. It is a lot more delicate as well, too. Um, yeah, so like, like if you want to know how to preserve natural materials, there's, I'm sure there's a bunch of YouTube videos out there. Um, AK it's, makes a natural preserver. That's right. That's um, right. I literally just saw that. I was like, yeah. why would I use that? For, for that exact for this, reason, yeah. yeah. EK makes a natural preserver, and so if you wanted to look into preserving your own stuff, that's great. Um, but if you're going to be making, like, massive amounts of terrain, it just, it's so yeah, time-consuming yeah, yeah. that it's almost not worth it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you can just buy tubs of gravel. If you want sand, I suggest... Uh, Home Depot, you a home de like playground sand, or if you have like a pet co around you that's having a sale or something like that, yeah. terrarium sand is really good because it's super fine. Yep, um, that's right. Yeah, and pet then pet stores are good. Yeah, for flower, gravel as well. Right? Yeah, yeah, flower arrangement for thicker gravel. Um, I would go to like a like a hobby store or something. You can buy pretty big tubs of it. I, I also kind of just find like that. Often what I want, like I, I want a particular type of gravel, like a look. I, I usually, honestly, even buying it, I have a hard enough time finding it. Right. So the idea that I could find it out in nature, um, like easily, is is not something I usually want to spend time on. Like, so I, I, I don't know. Typically, I know it seems like, wait, do you really have to go f buy gravel and rocks and moss and stuff? I can't just find it. I, I haven't had... Depends on the area you live in. Yeah, and but how yes, picky you with are, moss, maybe. Right? With moss and any sort of, like, natural material, even if you're crumbling up leaves or anything like that to use as, like, dirt scatter as well, Yeah, uh, you got to preserve it or else it's just going to continue to break down. Um, and then pretty soon it's not going to be there anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Uh, anyway. Damon, it says, to clarify my dilemma, I love both Imperial Fist and Blood Angel's lore. Um... And color. The play style really d doesn't, uh, I really don't know, as I have no clue how either play, let alone how 30k plays. Well, uh, damn it, you you have some sense of these if you, you've watched. Um, we do play Blood Angels on the stream way more than we play Imperial Fists. 
Um, I mean, in fist, Imperial Fists are really about their bolters. Like, the bolter is, like, sacred, right? So it's not just that they're, they're way more shooty than Blood Angels, who are, uh, let's face it, one of the most, like, get in and smash people in the face close combat armies um, of all the different Space Marine Legions. Um, it's not just that they're shooty, they're, they're, they're especially like small arms fire. They're like really leaning into the bolter as like their thing. But they're, they're like, you know, they're, you know their lore and that's what they do. Like I've, I've joked that they're like, their thing is standing. <laughs> they, they're good at standing around and waiting for somebody to come attack them and then they like defend. That's kind of like what they're, they're big at. I think their rules reflect that. I'm, I'm, I'm at, in current heresy. Um, it's going to be like if you want a bunch of tax squads. Yeah, so think about that. Like heresy actually does this good job, damn it, of like leaning into the unit that that makes the the not even just that they there's special units, but literally that they kind of like lean into the unit uh like generic units more. So like you're gonna have a lot of attack marines, they're all gonna have bolters. Um and Whereas with uh, Blood Angels, you can have more Assault Squads. Um, I can't remember. I haven't, I haven't played Heresy for so long. Um, I've played against both these factions. And I think that in general, in the Heresy that I was playing, um, that, that they do a good job, like, kind of giving the feel of the factions. So, you know, if you want to allow little squads that are going to, like, you know, be very tactical, tactical squads, literally kind of fan out, they also... Every, um, I forget what their thing was, but every Harris, uh, Imperial Fist player I ever played used the Breachers, which are kind of rare. They're the ones with the big shields. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure why they use those for Imperial Fists, and I never saw those for Blood Angels, or barely any other faction, honestly. There was something about those that Imperial Fist players loved. I, I, I'm not sure what the, why oh, that was. What exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Blood Angels, you know, are close combat. It's actually, it's like you've actually set yourself up with a really stark choice, damn it. Would you rather be shooty or would you rather be close combat? That's like the two factions you picked are almost like the shootiest loyalist faction and the most close <laughs> combat loyal faction, loyalist faction. So you know you want to be a loyalist, you know you like the lore. That's kind of the play style in a, in a nutshell. Yeah, usually when I'm having a hard time picking something, I'll just go the exact opposite of whatever I've been doing lately. I see. Yeah. You know, another good reason to pick something or not pick something, if, if you're, like, into either two factions, we kind of talked about this, and you actually even said this, you did this with the Vajroon and Conquest, is, like, what else is, are other people in the area not doing? Like, okay, like, yeah. what if in your area, damn it, of course, who knows with heresy, right? Um, there's probably not a lot of players, but, like, if one or two other people were already, like, super into Blood Angels, I'd probably do Fists, right? I'd be like, cool, I want to be the only Imperial Fist player. Or one of the first, or like, just something different. Do something different than yeah. what else is around. Like, not only was that cool for me, the other people will appreciate it. Like, because we'll get some variety in our play group. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. That's it's not. It's not like I would always tell you to let other people decide things for you in that way. You're not. You're not really. But, but that it, might be a factor you want to consider. Yeah, you've narrowed you know? it down. So like, yeah, I wouldn't avoid one because it's popular, right? Um, you said I, I I know like everybody in conquest. It's funny the the spire they really took like two fantasy things that everybody loves. Yep. Uh, elves and undead. Yep. And, and turned them into the same army. Yep. And that's like everyone plays spire. And then the the bat, the first battle box was like all spire or a lot of spire. Right? Uh, spire um, and hundred kingdoms, kingdoms right? which yeah. kind of sucked because then it was just like you want these cool alien elf dudes or humans. Uh, but play wise, the humans actually are are like super tough. Their their magic is probably one of the best, um, which makes them a really hard faction to to go against they're just not exciting i don't know man the bridger assembled the uh, the hundred kingdoms model they mm -hmm. sent us um we have we have it over there um, yeah and it's the the men at arms are cool man i like you really like i, I we were talking about this later like I, I earlier i i uh different week i i painted the dwarf and like when you paint the dwarves you don't really get a sense of the scale yeah. But when I paint, when we, I was like holding one of the men at arms in my hand, I was like, man, this is almost the size of a Sigmar ogre. Yep. And it, it, it was like 
it was cool. Yeah, I I uh I really liked the way the the men at arms, the Hundred Kings men at arms, Hundred Kingdoms men at arms like feel like holding the model. Looks like it'd be fun to paint. Oh yeah, like I like. Oh man, I'm, I like them. I'm just like that's the main critique that I've heard about the humans of Conquest is like, well, why would I play humans when I can play, you know, these other really cool. Well, things, is that but. not a is that not a fair con uh, critique in most? In a lot of game systems, right? Like, yeah. where, why mean, would I play a human in Dungeons and Dragons? I'm already a human. I, yeah. I, I'll be honest with you. I don't play. Do I play any human armies in the game site in Sigmar or 40k? No, I don't think so. No, I don't. I don't play any Imperial armies in 40k. Um, I guess Chaos, Thousand Suns. I guess they're Chaosy, um, and I don't play any in Sigmar. And don't have any interest in it. Well, I guess Stormcast? No, they're not really humans. I don't know. <laughs> um, perfect timing. I just finished with that. Oh, sweet. Awesome. Yeah. So if we want to zoom in, I'll kind of show what this looks like, Cat, real yeah. quick. Um, just so you guys can see, it's very subtle. And it will be subtle, Cat. I think you probably. I think you kind of knew that. Yeah. But, um, so these guys, the obliterators have, been, uh, have now been washed. I actually didn't wash the obliterators anywhere with non-oil. I still could. The order doesn't super matter, um, but I only washed with the green shade. And what I'm gonna now do is go back in with the second kind of verdigris uh, pump up, which is this AK turquoise. This is more impactful, right? It's way less subtle than the Carillion green shade. So um, I, I need to be just like a little bit more careful with this and, and choosy with where I put it. Mm -hmm. um, but the the green shade is I don't know I really like the look of green shade over um, over metallic like it's it's so I don't know it's very subtle the turquoise here um, is more opaque if you guys are kind of wondering how any of this the the contrast you would use would be um, tarragon turquoise I've used that as well um, for verdigris um, that's actually what I'm using on my daughters where they have verdigris because of course they have verdigris because why not everything kind of has verdigris right now. <laughs> Um, That's what you're currently into. The daughters are, uh, uh, excuse me, the Tarragon Turquoise uh, GW Contrast. How does it compare to the AK or how is this? This is, this is way more opaque. Yeah, uh, inks are, are, I wouldn't say opaque. I'd say intense. Use the word, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, they have more color payoff. And, but they, they're not opaque I wouldn't anyway yeah okay okay I, I wouldn't I wouldn't like necessarily unless maybe through an airbrush mm -hmm. I wouldn't like tint with this fair necessary well again maybe through an airbrush but this feels this this almost feels like it's a silly word but it almost feels like a technical paint like I'm almost using it the way I would use like a technical paint fair. over top of the um the verdigreed look yeah yeah well, uh, thank you, Kaldorf. Uh, super excited my local game store is going to have a dedicated hobby area when they move to their new location. Tips on fixing skin on where shading went bad. Uh, and then they also said, I have some eBay orphaned mega gargants where it appears the flesh shading was not evenly applied. Should I just paint over it? That, that would be my... Paint over my right? tip, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's very hard. Were you thinking about what else you could tell him? <laughs> <laughs> like what, what? Yeah. I mean, if you want the skin to look clean um, or smooth in any way, it's very it's very hard to come back from overly shaded or like glooped up shade or you know whatever glooped up wash or whatever. Um, especially when it comes to skin, it's it's it. It's almost even more obvious on skin than it is on like armor or whatever. Because at least with armor, you can, oh, here's some chipping or here's some rust or you know whatever. But with skin, it's it's hard to cover that up, other than just completely painting over it. Yeah, um, I know. I wish there's something else we could tell you. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I wish I had better news for you or better advice really, um, or m maybe more useful than just paint over it, but it depends on what you wanna do. If you 
want to because you can't really like super weather skin um and there's not a whole lot you can do to like cover it up other than just painting over it um so yeah unfortunately that's my best advice is paint over it um now if you how you paint over it is up to you if you want to like maybe honestly glue some extra bits onto it uh where it's really bad and then you know paint those bits up and then just kind of focus on that yeah um that will save you some time rather than just like painting over the entirety of the skin um that would be something that you can do it depends on the look that you're going for if you want them to look the way that they are just with better skin then honestly the best thing you can do is just paint it all paint over it um so yeah that that would be my advice unfortunately right yeah yeah it's it's unfortunate advice but is it is the best that i can offer you if you want to cover it you can cover it with extra bits can't really rust it out in any way right um that would be my suggestion if it was like a vehicle but with skin you can paint over it or you can put stuff on top of it and what that stuff is you know you can just put more gubbins you can put maybe like a a green stuff animal skin or something over it i think that would fit with the garden oh, yeah 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 um you know and then and then just kind of fix the areas that need fixing in your opinion hopefully not all of it is awful um but i would have to like almost see them in a way to give you the best advice or at least the most constructive but you can yeah there's not a whole lot you can do when it comes to fixing skin when it's already dry I, you know, for me, um, I almost kind of feel like, I, I guess one of the questions is, are you, what, was the eBay buy because you were like hoping that a bunch of the model was done and you'd be further along and didn't have to do it yourself, which is uh, maybe what you were going for or were, you know, were you like, you know, I don't know what state these are going to be in, but I know I'm going to have to do work over them. I, I don't know, for me, I'm kind of like, uh, I don't know, I, I'm, a psych, I'm a psycho and I, I want everything to be painted by me. So I, I, I don't, I'd be like, okay, cool. Like I got, I, you know, I'm, I'm going to. Oh, I got, I got a model. I got I an gotta army do, for cheap and I'm I just going to do this over. anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah Meg, yeah. Um, at one of the, at, at SoCal, at one of the frontline gaming um, where they kind of sell secondhand models, mm -hmm. um, Meg picked up some Vargas for her Soul Blight Grave Lords that were painted pretty decently. And pretty much in the way she's painting her army, like very similar. Right. So she was kind of like, hey, you know what? Uh, this saves cool. me some time. This just gave me a unit. <laughs> I, and I was just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's usually around. Like for me, I, I want it to, I, I want to paint it, right? So. Oh, I definitely like the metal you used better than, I'm going to go through and do my metal again, that color. What what metal did you use? Uh, I did it all in lead belcher, and then I dry brushed a little bit with natural steel from AK. Natural steel. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, I probably need to. But I also didn't wash any of the metal. Oh, you haven't washed one. any of the metal yet. Yeah, oh. so that might be a thing, but I also applied a, a bit more metal than you did, I think, in certain areas. So. I see, yeah. yeah, okay. Well, so, but even up here, like you you, you wash some of it with the green shade yet or no? No. Oh, okay, yeah. But it looks that way, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, I'm gonna see how it comes out before I make any judgments then. Fair. But I kind of like it a little bit brighter yeah. than mine. So I think I probably need to go back over, uh, maybe do mine a little with, with something a little bit brighter yeah, yeah yeah i'll wash i'll wash very sparingly because i do like the cleaner look a little bit yeah um I, I find that the green shade is is better than for that because like the green shade doesn't bring it down so much as known oil mm -hmm. it just like tints it right like yeah. duh, that's what it's supposed to do right yeah i'll use it to like bring out some details and stuff but um i probably won't go as heavy-handed as I mean, you did yeah. i love the uh the AKA turquoise ink for Vertigree though. It's so good. 
Look at the little, like this is the way it sits on the skull, like. Yeah. Yeah, it's so yeah. nice. No, I agree. It's, <laughs> it sits really well, like. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's a good look. I agree. Well, uh, thank you, damn it. Um, those obliterators look pretty snazzy, all right, but have you thought about getting some mutilators, Zach? I feel that's a model only a Zach could love. Yeah. Yeah, so um, film me in, guys. I know um, mutilators are, nobody uses them. I know they're like the close combat obliterators. I, I played one game against them one time at the, with, with Brad at the LVO Narrative uh, 2019. Yeah, 2019 LVO Narrative. Um, so, somebody we played had them. And um, yeah, the models are like fine cast, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. They're not, they don't have a plastic kit or this isn't a dual kit for, um, this isn't a dual kit for mutilators, I don't think, right? So, um, maybe somebody knows, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, I'm pretty sure I, th I I assumed it was at one point, and then it wasn't. And yeah, the original mutilators are not. Oh, that's a late kit. That was like, you know, most GW kits pretty cool, or at least like like you're 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 uh, teasing me because I love things like the ATV and stuff. <laughs> um, but man, that kit, yeah, they look really derpy, don't they? They're like their faces are. Is it circa old G Dub? No, then... no. That's what's so weird about it. It, it was, um, I don't think they were metal. I th but I think they were um, one of the few units that was like designed ex like specifically for fine cast, or are they plastic? Are m damn it, in metal? Yeah, I don't. I feel like they were post metal, but not so. So they're not plastic. Um, or are, are they plastic? Does anybody know? I, I, I don't know. They're, they're super derpy. That's what I was kind of getting ready to say. Like, there are definitely older models that, right. like, like, I, I'll tell you, I, I know for sure a Mornfang uh, and, and the Ogre Rider in a Mornfang is, like, oh, no, I don't know that for sure now that I think about it. <laughs> I, I, think, I think a Mornfang and the Rider holds up pretty well to modern GW, and it's, it's at least a, I'm going to say, 15-year-old kit. I think the mut the mutilators cannot be that old. I remember they came out since I've played. I started playing again in 2008. So that would be, what, 14 years max if they came out right away when I said, which I don't think they did. Yeah, they're like shockingly derpy for when they came out. I, I feel bad talking about how derpy they are. I know, I'm sure the sculptor is not listening to me, but... <laughs> Um, I have to imagine whoever sculpted them would love another go at it. Yeah, I, I would also have to imagine if if they do look that way, whoever sculpted them probably enjoys <laughs> more old school G Dub kits than. Yeah, you know. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, Brett, Brett, Brett is right. It's actually worse than what Brett's describing because what happened is they they did fail the charge and then. Uh, what I, I, they were up against a wall and I, I just surrounded them with fire warriors and the rest of my army. And this is when Tau had for the rare goods. So they just overwatched. So there was like two mutilators and a little arc of fire warriors around them and a wall. And I didn't, and I just stood there and for the rest of the game, you couldn't do anything. Cause if he charged, which I think he eventually did, they just die in overwatch, which is pretty sure what happened. Aww. Um, yeah, they, that's not what I, like, yeah, they're not, they're not good. That's fine. But um, they also just oh they're so mega derpy looking. You're right, damn it. No, I don't. I don't love them. You found, you found something I'm not uh, controversial on. I guess I agree with the community at whole. Mutilator model, not great. Not great. Okay. Well, I'll tell you. I'm thinking my stopping point for the night is going to be after this turquoise. But where are you at, Kat? I don't want to. Uh, we, we might, we might have no, to finish I'm some off done. stream. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm almost done. I just have to put the lighter bone color on the skull okay. and on this tassel. And I would consider myself done with okay. this model. I have, I have some more to do on these guys. Other than like maybe some blood splatters or something, but I'm not a big fan of that. So I don't like blood splatters. You can or... kind of put that where you want to put it. Did I, I didn't really put blood splatters on, did I? Oh, not blood splatters, oh, but like the, the, little like the little tiny sores, the sores. Yeah. And... The wounds, the wounds. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm kind of looking at it without the wounds and I think I like it 
a little better. I'm not <laughs> sure. I, I am leaning. I am not sure that I love the wounds as much anymore Fair. either. I, I would say uh, sleep on it maybe, and then yeah. you, you can always add them in again. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. I just not a like. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of like splattered blood or like blood on a sword or. No, I'm not something. either. I I kind of liked what what I had been doing. So so chat knows. I don't know if you guys had a close-up of it at any point, but what I had done, I, I actually painted over it now, is I had kind of like where the flesh part meets the metal part. I had put it sort of like some pink, mm -hmm. and then um, over top of it I ended up putting the red, mm -hmm. the blood, the translucent red, to kind of show like just like, I guess, agitation where metal and flesh were meeting. Um, but I'm not sure that I'm going to keep that look if I'm yeah honest. i think honestly if i was gonna do that i would use maybe a darker red instead of like a, a brighter red um mm. almost to show like a bruising in a way yeah or i might do um i i did like pink with the translucent red mm -hmm. i'm wondering if i almost like did a little bit of purple like a dark purple and then, yeah, I, I might play around with that. Because I think I do want something there. Yeah. Other than just the green. Mm -hmm. um, just the green looks kind of cool, though. But um, I think I want something a little bit more than that. Is that it? Let's put it on glam cam. Yeah, sweet. Yeah. Um, I guess there's some work to do. Um, I can show you guys where the, I'm at on them. But Cats is actually finished. Uh, oh, yeah, fine cast. Damn. Yeah, I think, I feel like they're, like, one of the few models that was always mm -hmm. fine cast. Like, I'm not sure they were ever metal mutilators, but, yeah, yeah, they're so ugly. Wait, there we go. Oh, yeah. So you guys can see the one Cat did. Um, the metal is just a little bit brighter, so um, I I, I'll, I actually like that better. The, the one she does currently on the right there. And I think I want to bring up my metal just a little bit more as well. Uh, but I will say that surprisingly, um, even though cast models do look a little bit scary uh, with the trim, if you're airbrushing and if you can lay down a pretty, uh, a, a pretty uh, smooth base coat with your airbrush that you like, honestly, like it's, that's then what you do, right? I don't know how you feel, but I kind of feel like what you end up doing is painting trim. Like that's what I feel like I work on when I work on cast models. Uh, I'll put these guys in and just kind of show you guys what's left on them. Ooh, this is going to be a handsome group together. They look um, really cool. So I like that green a lot. The green, yeah. And this is cool because this is the color of their decal. So where, wherever we end up putting decals, like on smaller guys. Yeah. Um, so I have a lot to do left on these guys, but it honestly won't take me too long, but too long to keep going on stream. I think I probably have an, about another two hours of work on them. So I do need to go and address their address their faces hidden in here a little bit. They're they're kind of like mini hell brutes in a way. Um, also, what's left? Let me show back on uh, in 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 here in person, um, so so fans can can see. Uh, so also, what's left? I need to do this. This I'm going to be doing like a bone color. This is like a loin cloth he's got here. I do need to address this. The, this is like his his gross gun. Mm -hmm. That's like part monster part. Um, machine. Uh, I need to uh, highlight the metal, bring that back up a little bit. Um, and yeah, I need to do something around this area. I, I, I'm kind of thinking, I like your bruising idea. I think even that is just insightful and helpful right there. Like I don't maybe want to think of it as recent injuries, but mm -hmm. bruising. Yeah. Or not think of it as like lacerations or abrasions, but bruising, literally. Yeah. I think like what I might try to do is dry, start by dry brushing a little bit of purple. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I'll see a dark purple. Mm, I'm not sure, maybe a medium purple, maybe this? No, that's probably too light. That, that, I would say that's too light for Yeah, it's bruising. too light. Yeah. Probably, probably dark purple. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably do a mix of the, uh, whatever the blue, the McCrag blue McCrag. with- <laughs> yeah, with um, this is no, there's no H in here. With Demoneth purple or Demoneth skin, I think that's what it's called. From um, oh, d yeah, 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 yeah. Um, sure that like super bluey purple, but like make it a little bit more blue or a little mm -hmm. bit darker. That would be my thing. If you don't want to use black red, which is my go-to, I do have black red. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. might. 
I like black red. Maybe if you want to make it a little bit more purple, you can mix McCrag. I don't know how you feel. I sometimes am like not into. There's something about red and green being like too different in their hue, or in their value that that is an odd look for me. Okay. I don't know if that that's that's a weird call out, but for whatever reason, I'm okay with like like an equally bright red near uh -huh. green. There's something where I like <laughs> I want red and green to be like not two contrasts to each other. Like they, they they inherently are contrast colors, right? Yes. But I don't then want their value and their hue to like also be contrasted. Right. It starts to like, I don't know. I don't know what the word is. I might mm -hmm. try it though. I might try black red. Um, yeah, it was yeah, fun. Yeah, like a Thanks desaturated red I think would be my opinion. Desaturated, okay. Yeah. I'll probably give it a try. Thanks for bringing some Alpha Legion with me, Kat. Well, thank you for teaching me about 40K. I feel yeah, like yeah. I am a master <laughs> in all 40K knowledge now. You got 80% on your quiz. Which I think was was good for your Yeah, I should one. have picked a really big Warhammer, honestly. A yeah. really big Warhammer, <laughs> yeah. Um, we actually already know what we're doing next week, and we're going to tell you guys. Uh, Adrian is the Chaos Knights guy here at the studio. He's been painting some up in anticipation of the new book. Um, and we will be working on some wild conversions he did. So he actually left his almost finished models in our hands, which is kind of fun. Um, so we have more trim to paint. Yay! And then um, it's going to be wild because we're going to weather these. We're going to actually spend a little bit of time weathering them. Yeah. Um, he gave us one way he wants us to weather them. We think Cat loves weathering. I love weathering. So I think we're going to like just go rogue on these models. He's in England. He can't physically stop us. I don't think he would complain if we did more to the models than like has already been done. How how would you feel about weathering them in insane ways that make no sense? Like multiple atmospheres happening at once. It would look awful, but they're not our but they're models. But they're chaos. And they're not our models. Yeah, we can do whatever we want with them. We can it's do great. whatever. great. He's not here. <laughs> so, um, you know, yeah. Uh, it, it's actually cool because we're going to do the trim, and part of the trim, is the weathering is kind of worked into that process a little bit, that um, like chipping and stuff like that that he does. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that, and that's like step one of the weathering. Then we'll actually like layer some weathering again over top of it. Yep. But we're going to talk, we'll do his, we'll honor his weathering, but we're going to see if we can uh, step, do, it, up step, it, up, step yeah. it up a notch. So um, I think that's it. And we are caught up on chats. We are caught up on fan stuff. Bryce, you might have missed it. Sorry, Bryce. Uh, you just have to watch the stream again. Yeah, you got you to rewatch, Bryce. Um, Kat, anything going on with you? What are you working on outside of outside of here? What are you painting up these days? Oh, I'm working on more terrain stuff. Yep. Uh, I just finished painting up that like skeleton stuff from the Thondian Struggle oh, box. Oh, it looks so cool. I loved it yeah. so much. I'll, I'll post it up in Please. Uh, Discord. Please post it. Yeah, yeah. it looks really yeah. cool. Um, you did like... The basing you did on it is, is really nice. Yeah, I, want, yeah. I wanted it to match the... Um, the, other, the the table that I have going yeah, on. Yeah, so yeah. it needed to be like super lush and green and cute. It, it yeah. is, it is, but like it, it still, it looks good. Yes. It looks real and yes. it doesn't look like overboard or and anything that, like that. That kit was so fun and easy to paint and to get it yeah. to look that good, it, like it seriously, it didn't take that many steps. So I'll, I'll definitely post that in Discord um, and I'll, I'll let you guys know what I did to it. Um, but other than that, I've been obsessed with Planet Zoo. So it's a Steam game, and you get to run a zoo. Oh. Yeah. Other than that, I uh, just recently tried the Flamin' Hot Mountain Dew. What? I think my life has been changed forever. Good or bad? I actually really like it. Flaming Hot? It's like a, is it like cinnamon? No, no, no. It's like Flaming Hot Cheetos Mountain Dew, but it doesn't taste like Cheetos. It actually tastes like orange soda. Orange soda? Yeah, it tastes like oh. orange soda, and then it's like spicy. It has like a sp Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that's, that's okay. Yeah. 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 So, uh, if they anyone. They have gross flavored sodas as like a thing. Like they have like like that company that makes like ranch flavored soda. Yeah, that's disgusting. Yeah, 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 no. Yeah, if anyone's been uh, hesitant on trying the Flamin' Hot Mountain Dew because they think it's cancer in a bottle, it might be, honestly, but I'd say try it. It's actually, it'll probably surprise you. I. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna maybe try it. I don't know, maybe not. I haven't seen that. I've they no they sell it at uh, Santa Clara. At King Castle. Yeah. Oh my god. 
Um, okay, awesome. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. As we like to say, be kind to each other, be kind to yourselves, and always be creating. We'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, oops.